no, no. Didn't hear it, mate. for a big lump, isn't it? Jumbo's quite harsh, isn't it? Noisy and shouty. And mind you, these things can if they want to. I think she's quite light, actually. BAs go out quite loudy and shouty sometimes, but look at that. That's a gracious climb out, isn't it? We tend to be, uh, we fall KGB. Yeah. Because I've got the old, uh... What is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. Left turn, Clyde. Come on. You've got a 350 behind you, but he, I think you're gonna, he's going to give you a bit of space. Because uh, the wake from one of these things can... Um, in the right conditions. Wow, look at that, it's a shallow turn, man. Oh, went for it, and then here comes the second phase, I think, coming up now. Or is he just getting out of the way for this 350? Because he's gone long, hasn't he? Normally that's quite an early break left. Here it comes now. Is it? No. <laughs> I'll get me coat. In your own time! <laughs> the pilots are saying in this 350. <laughs> you are live. You've got me. Oh. Well, we'll just, uh, we'll just leave that. Such a... I couldn't just stand here for another 45 minutes and not show you folks this, you know. It's just, you gotta see it all, haven't you? Three eighty still on that course. Only now starting to turn. There she turns now, right in the lamppost. <laughs> we do love a lamppost. Oh, look at this. Now this is interesting, folks. Um, the other, one of the other reasons why I went live, obviously because I wanna show you this amazing stuff. Um, I know we are heading for arrivals 27 right at three o'clock for the turnover for, for the turnover for the uh, switch over <laughs> you've been turned over son <laughs> oh look at this old bird united triple Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. You're all good. Oh, mate, this this is just not going to hang around for anyone, is it? 
she's she's firing up already man. she's she's rolling here we go thank you sorry sir are we gonna get a third spawn here or is that it oh Straight down the middle. I think it is because of that uh, almost direct headwind that they're they're not needing to give it so much. But ah, oh yeah, heaving that thing off the ground, man. Positive rate, gear up. Here we go. Three seconds. After wheels off ground, normally around about that time, three seconds for a positive rate call. Retract that big 35 ton main gear. 35 tons, man. And that's just the undercarriage. It's amazing, isn't it? This guy should turn, I'd imagine, sooner than the, uh, earlier than the uh, Emirates. Well, but then they may just be on a different track. Uh, this time of day, or uh, at the moment, or for whatever reason it might be. What's that? There she goes. What's that, GP? We've got a 747 inbound, by the way, folks. We've got two. Hey, hey! Wow! I think this guy here's starting his number two engine. I can hear it. Unless it's that, uh, wow, they are going long, aren't they? Might get a bit of cloud shot here. He's got a 320neo behind him. That's a, that's a lot of weight for a small jet like that. And of course, with the wind being in the direction that it is, means that that wake will more likely stay around for a little bit longer or elements of it go cloud surfing thanks that was Austria Neo quite surprised at the uh, the continued issues that they're having with the Pratt and Whitney engine so many operators affected by it um, and now they've got another issue on, on a only a select number of engine, uh, aircraft though. Um, the, uh, it's a compressor, low pressure compressor um, sleeve or drive or something to do with the, um, the mechanism on the low pressure compressor, the front end of the engine that, uh, that they're allowing, I think, the, um, the, 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 the engineers uh, independent airlines to actually change them out themselves on wing because it's the low speed fan which is the turbo the main fan wow that wind's pretty harsh man nice 737 and of course the other issue with all of with almost every Pratt and Whitney PW those um new engines is uh, the, the other issue, which is the original issue, is something to do with uh, one of the, the, the blades or the material of the blades. A uh, bit like what happened with the, um, the Trent 1000 kind of thing, really. So as you can imagine, remember seeing some hybrid 737s out in, uh, in Sydney, of course. Uh, Qantas retrofitting um, 
the Max style rate uh, scimitar winglet, the split scimitar winglet, not the Max one, but the pre-Max one with the, the hair flicks on it. But such a popular aircraft. And the other thing that I thought we'd, we'd go live early for, folks, <laughs> is that. Now that looks like some bloke's just gone up to it and slapped it with a load of Dulux. External. But it's not, is it? It looks, it's, it looks so retro. It's because it hasn't got the, the, um, the, the livery on the, on the windows. But look how shiny her tail is, man. So that, um, we've got another Air India 777 that's coming in a, just, just before seven o'clock tonight. And that's what we're looking at being our closeout shot. Oh, hello, hello. Who fancies a bit of startup? Right, it's time to belt up, JD. And listen out for these, uh, push it this way, sir, push it this way. Right, come to your comments and all that kind of stuff, folks. How you doing, Joe Wilson? Brand new member. Welcome, Joe. Uh, we had some others, didn't we? Let me scroll right to the top. Oh. See the lighting, the light change when... Um... When that sun goes behind the cloud. I just want to see if we can get these things fired up. Agent M, 1958, has gifted a membership. Thank you, Agent M. <laughs> to, uh, next week could be a very good week, folks. <laughs> it's quite an exciting week for us. You know what, mate? Well, if, if that's the case, then uh, that's the case. But I'm talking about... Thought I'd do it for you, folks, because uh, <sighs> Agent M, join a BB Calpan, Clipper 707, Rohit Parkhouse, Scooter Springsteen, Emma. Sue Cruz, Rich S, Marianne, Mrs H. The wind gusts are quite strong higher up, Steph. Yeah, they are, most definitely. Um, what you feel on the ground, in fact, funny enough, what I feel on top of this van, even though I'm like only 10 feet above the ground, um, believe it or not, is different from what it is on the ground because you have what's known as um, friction layers or convection layers. That zip zap straight in the super class. Zip zap. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Zip zap. Like, uh, GP. Uh, changing the headset. Zap. Get involved in the chat if you want to, folks. Please don't feel, uh, don't don't worry about asking any type of question here on Big Jet TV. I love questions. We love questions. Um, keeping us informed on what's going on, what's coming in, uh, what it is going out, age of aircraft, all those kind of uh, interesting stats, questions on engineering, all of that stuff. Uh, I love to get involved with, um, and, and of course we do have pilots. Um, frequently on the on the live chat as well who are members as well as um, 
very knowledgeable people, people who are good with Google, um, and uh, just, yeah, great community. So if you're new, uh, then please get involved. I like to see new names. Uh, I like to be reading out new named comments, if you see, see what I mean. Um, so what one thing I do need is some kind of like, this sun glare is, uh, is there any way that I could adjust this phone across here? Right, hold on folks, let me just try this. Don't worry, it works. Big Jet Jerry, I haven't seen that work that used for a long time. That was my original. No, it was Jet Scoper Jerry, wasn't it? That was my original. Uh, yeah, Jet Scope Jerry. Uh... Sorry, folks, just trying to adjust this phone. Oh, look at this Qatar 380 coming out. Uh, right, can I let the weight off and if that's, yeah, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to need to lock this out regularly. Uh, I don't know if that's actually going to work, mate. Because that's going to put pressure on the, yeah. Hold on, folks, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to live with it. I'm going to have to live with the glare, I'm afraid. Okay, what's that? Somebody asking about the Northern Runway, which we're on. Heading towards the west, that's what they're doing right now. 270 degrees. Oh, listen to this. Don't you love that sound? That clattering of the blades. Oh, sorry folks, sorry. Just want you to see this. Oh. Yeah, been on Air Canada 777, stunning, Clive Clark saying. Um, So many new people, man. Good day, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Three and a half thousand people already. Amazing people. Hope you're enjoying your afternoon. Had your Sunday lunch or put it back till later. Sit back, relax. Get the crumpets on the go and enjoy.
Rolls-Royce Trent 800. Nice. It's amazing the, uh, the number of engine types these uh, manufacturers uh, build for specific aircraft as well. Unique to specific aircraft for that platform. So they work very closely, obviously, with the airframer, Boeing, Airbus, Embraer. Here we go. Oh, oh he's not letting us down, is he? the least jet and they've sort of like had it semi-painted so I'm guessing that those uh, window paintings uh, the window livery it's got a name hasn't it uh, an Indian name uh, for a specific style someone's gonna tell me Clipper G90 indeed that's gonna be do a big left bank so got another triple two lined up behind me one of BA's what 43 triple seven two hundreds more trend power folks just got to get that Air India jet banking man look at that look at that wing oh what a picture and then in the distance you hear the local skylark waking up for the summer good lad oh dream What's a what? What's a Tripura? Jacora, there we go. Thank you, whoever said that. Who said that? Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Rohit. Thank you, Avro. Might get some uh, some funkadelic shots here. Um, the Savo. Did you get his rego? Did you call the Ambo? <laughs> I've been watching too much of that show now. Now I'm starting to watch the ones on the. Hey, there we go. I'm starting to watch the ones on the uh, the, the the road cops. <laughs> anyway. Do what? Yes, yes, if I make an appearance. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, Tim Smart has gifted 10 memberships. Tim, thank you so much. We're early, folks. Uh, still another 20 minutes of departures to go, but I couldn't just stand here like going, oh, that's nice. Oh, look at that, and not have you guys uh, ex share it with you, man. I've got to share this with you, haven't I? It's my fault for turning up early, but there you go. <laughs> I'll never look upon the Ibis Hotel in the, in the same way now. I just think of a bin chicken every time I see the logo. Dave Mack, good question. Difference between the Trent 7, 8, 
and the nines and the 1000s I'm guessing uh, just developed in a different sort of era really um, XWBs as well are the latest uh, and the Trent 7000 as well um, but if you look at this aircraft here that's got Trent 700s uh, Trent 800s on it sorry hold on we've got a uh, out of control strap there the elevator there it is it's early man wow that size of that uh, that empennage folks look at the span of the tail there as wide as the wingspan of an a318 now that is a stat that is true none of that fit in a 737 in a GE 90 <laughs> Malagi because you can't Man, they're lining up the heavies here, man. So yes, Trent 700 start at the beginning, developed um, specifically for the A330 program. I think I'm right in saying that the uh, Trent 700, uh, or uh, yes, I think that's right. Um, the Trent 800, again another. Um, specific engine for a specific type the uh triple seven um sorry trent 800 um the, oh hello wait a minute yeah the trent 800 developed for the triple seven to run alongside well actually uh it's a bit of a a savior for uh for the 777 program really because the GE90, the launch engine, had quite a few issues. Oh, this is beautiful, this Egypt air, look at this. Trent 900 again, built specifically for the uh, A380 program. Trent 1000 again, another specific engine for the um, for the 787 Dreamliner. So basically uh, what the uh, airframers do, they go to the uh, they go to the engine manufacturers and they put tenders out. Uh, who wants the who wants the deal? Do they want to develop it exclusively? Or um, or are they uh, do they want to have another option? Um, Like for example, the Gen X, the GE Nine X, sorry, the GE N X engine um, by General Electric is almost identical uh, to the Trent One Thousand, and that was the option that the uh, oh hello, what's that? What's he doing? It's a go around. What's what's that? That's a funny old go around. But didn't go down the uh, the active runway. Went wow. I don't, he wasn't coming in on this runway, was he? he wasn't it? Wasn't a a rogue or anything? No. I was I just wondering why he's gone all the way over here? That's all. Oh, another one. Another one. Another one. Ah, uh, Heathrow. We have a problem. Okay. Look. Something on the runway. See if uh, see if this one does the same. Okay, there's another one in front of him, so looks like this guy's good. Holding these jets for quite some time, I have to say. I think that's as a result of that go around, literally. Look at the path of it. It doesn't. It, look, look at the path of the go around, Jilly. And it sort of like goes. Does it go right over the field? You're right, mate. Yeah, yeah. Oh. 
Mate, I've got a coffee, but mate, thanks for that. <laughs> Mate. Appreciate it. McDonald's is actually horses on the runway. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> it was bad enough when Dexter flipping went out. <laughs> I've had all sorts of, I've had all sorts of things sent to me and like funny, you know, silly pictures. <laughs> Moving over to departures in 10 minutes, folks. Or actually, to be precise, 13 minutes. Because that's uh, day every single day on two sevens. Interesting. That is interesting because uh, wow. I mean, the wind is uh, the wind is directly at us. You know, I mean, the sock couldn't be any more um, at that angle. Look at that. Where's Harry gone? I just want to get him to put him on. Look at that. I mean, that's straight down the middle, isn't it? Oh, did I say departures? Sorry, we're going to be switching to arrivals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, this coffee is hot. What a legend. Where is it? What an absolute legend. Thank you, sir. Harry. Looking at Flight Radar 24, it was two BA 320s that went around Traveller. Or Tra 77 ER. <laughs> Emma Deal, uh, Brian, Brian Panner. Did that answer the, um, the question about the Trent families and uh, what's the difference between them? Um, as well as obviously the, 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 the you know, the Trent uh, 700, uh, the Trent, uh, there was the Trent 500 as well, which powered the uh, the A346 exclusively. That was another exclusive power plant. Avro Arrow, is there a definition of un unstable approach? Yeah, well, you think of unstable and you just think of sort of like, you know, uh, 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 um, that, that, it's, it's a, bit, a bit like going down. It's a bit like going down a pothole road, isn't it? And you're having to dodge all the potholes, and it's like you know. Imagine that. Uh, I'm guessing would be the sort of like where you where your car becomes a little bit unstable, you know. Um, so you're not happy with it. Would I say? General Scruffs. Thank you, sir. In the world. Uh, appreciate it. Well, look, at the end of the day, don't like to blow our own trumpet, but we are the, um, we were the pioneers of aviation live streaming all those days ago. Wonderful, wonderful airport, London Israel. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Oh, hello. Is that special livery 777 A&A? Without me seeing it. Pokemon. Wow. And there it 
is. Uh, well, I tell you what, oh, no, sorry, <laughs> I was going to say, I really am still jet lag chilly. <laughs> oh, we'll get it, no we won't, <laughs> we'll get it taxiing out, how about that, good eye. I've, I've decided I'm sorry, I'm sorry everyone else around the world, but I just love the Aussies, I love I just like, why are you so far away? <laughs> Come on, someone invent flipping like beaming capabilities or something, you know. Where would you like to go, sir? Uh, Regis Hotel, uh, Sydney Airport, please. Very well, sir. You may feel a bit of a headache when you get there, but rest assured, you will feel fine after approximately 40 minutes. Thanks very much, right, okay, let's go. Oi, hey, here we go, look. Spotted, Jenny, spotted. Oh, going very slowly. Is it maybe pregnant? <laughs> I don't know. It's a very slow run, a very slow pass, isn't it? Hi, what watch it. Yeah, we do need, we do need. Doctor O, get down here, son. Flipping TARDIS me up. Might food, might, might meet a few maggots on the way or uh, Cybermen. Mind you, I always felt sorry for the Cybermen. They were never sort of like, had very sort of like blank faces, didn't they? Anyway, sorry. sorry. Um, getting off subject there. But um, yes, yes, Sydney. Sydney, we love you. But, uh, yeah, you know what I think I might do? I think I might. Um, is that fella, is that, is that, is that Harry? Where is he? Is that Harry? You're Harry, yeah? Mate, thanks for the coffee, man. Doing his little filming thing, look. Maggots, maggots, giant maggots in a quarry, in a quarry. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Cybermen. They're all a bit like stormtroopers in a funny sort of way. <laughs> like, sort of like, you know, there he is over there, look. All right, Harry, cheers, mate. Good lad. Uh, right, listen, I am, while I'm just here, hold on a minute. Okay, what have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Hold on a minute. Uh, 54. Is that Dreamliner deciding whether or not they're going to go out of this runway or not? Because he's got a bit of a... Uh, uh, Oi! Hurry up, will you, mate? <laughs> Look! There's no one in front of you! In it! Uh, uh. What's he doing? I don't know. Oh! Yeah, mate, I'm hitting the wall at nine o'clock. I'm hitting the wall at nine o'clock. I'm starting, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he going to the, is he going down the long way? He's going, there's different intersecting points. This is uh, American 777, 200. Listen to the engines. Rolls Royce. interesting story about the 777 and the launch of the 777 and the, initially it uh, it was launched with the GE90 engine the General Electric GE90 engine which was the first ever engine in the world to have carbon 
fan blades, as far as I'm aware, or to experiment with them or to use them on a commercial jetliner. Um, something like that, anyway. But they initially had some um, pretty uh, serious issues with the, uh, with the engine. Um, and thankfully, uh, Rolls-Royce were in the sidelines developing the, uh, the Trent 800 engine. Um, and turn around to um, because British Airways, who were one of the launch customers, I think, with the Triple Seven, initially took delivery of their uh, their Triple Sevens with the GE ninety engine, uh, but they had significant issues with it. And obviously, you know, Rolls Royce got wind of this and said, "Listen, why don't you just switch your next batch of Triple Sevens to uh, to Rolls Royce power, and we'll just um, and we'll just." And they were like, "Yeah, hundred percent." What today? Oh, was there a bird strike? Oh. So there is your uh, three o'clock runway inspection, folks. In fact, a little bit early. Um, hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, Singapore Slinger, last to go in on the Southern. Right, I'm just gonna quickly move this phone. In the big in hold, that doesn't fare well, I have to say. It doesn't fare well if they're going in the big in hold, no. Okay, let me see if I can. Uh... I'll tell you what I'll do. I will pitch that. Fod or Fox? Yeah, so do I, man. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, that, 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 would have, that would have made a right old mess if they did hit a Fox. Really? Oh, God almighty, man. It's not good. I don't like it when that happens. I'm not happy with that, man. Just, yeah. Okay, first arrival. Uh, keep me posted, folks, on what's coming in. And, um, you know, anything exciting. We've got two 747s. The closeout shot tonight, I think, is going to be the, uh, the Air India 777. It'll probably be late, though. Oh, 747. 747 in the hold. It's the big and hold, and it's Cafe Pacific. Oh, please bring her in on this runway, man. That's what we're keeping an eye on, folks. It's a Cathay Pacific 747 on flight radar 24. Open it up. In from Dubai, but DWC Dubai, not Dubai International Airport, if you know what I mean. Currently 8,000 feet, 226 knots. Um, let's see what she does now. She's sort of like come out of that hole now. That's a very odd route that she's taking. So she's heading west. 
there's, there's got to be a glitch in it. Something's going to happen any moment now. It's going to, it's going to all of a sudden. Heading towards Guildford, man. Good lad, good lad. So while I'm, um, while I'm just waiting, folks, I'll just um, quickly tell you that the. Uh, <laughs> can you see me? Can you see? Can you see this, Jilly? Okay. So uh, the latest batch of stickers going to going out, and quite a number going overseas, which is amazing. Um, Aaron, I don't know what your last, um, your last, uh, if you got a butler or something, because he just sent me an envelope um, with nothing in it. Uh, oh, actually, no, it was. It was just like it was great meeting you at the London Heathrow meet and greet. Uh, thanks, mate. Great to see you. Thanks in advance for the sticker, mate. You're supposed to send an envelope with uh, with your name on it and a, and, and a stamp. <laughs> but I'll let well, I'll let this one go uh, for you, Aaron. So uh, that's on its way. Um, Michael Daniel in Canada. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, Aaron. I've got your one ready, but this is the one that made me laugh. Jill, watch this. I don't know if I can actually explain. <laughs> um, so look at the way this is written. It made it. It made it here. Box 74741. How the hell? And look on the back. Look on the back, Jilly. And look at the address. She sent me, or sent me a whole load of American stickers, <laughs> stamps. Okay, but look at the address. This is, the, you know you're supposed to send a self-addressed stamped envelope, right? Okay, I'm gonna hold this. It's a bit of bubble wrap with her address on it. And he's just torn it out of something. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Lorraine, your stickers are on their way to you. Uh, but that is fantastic. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> How the hell did that make it? And it's the oldest uh, envelope ever as well. Hello. Sorry. Sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right, okay. <laughs> Absolute classic. Um, like, did you see, did you see the, um, did you see the, uh, the, 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 the fact that it was written on a piece of bubble? Yes, tiniest bit of like, She's looking around the room like, where's a bit? But no, 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 here's the question, Jilly. How did she get, how did she? Did she, st she must have obviously printed it on that bubble wrap envelope, which is, you can't do that. You can't put that in a printer and do it. So how has that all happened is my question. <laughs> and why has she like ripped it apart so it's tiny and, oh, brilliant. Lorraine. stickers please just brilliant man obviously the pen was running out and everything I, don't, I just don't know what a classic quite a few from uh from miami as well I had a couple from miami so um you know it's great to send stickers out folks and i do it personally and you know people send little notes or uh, it's just funny um but 99% uh, of people do it right and obviously enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope. Um, because as you can appreciate, folks, if, I, if everybody sort of like, if, if, if everybody did it 
in willy nilly, then I'd just be spending my old days down at the post office and uh, all that kind of stuff and writing out envelopes and things. Um, oh, hello, look at this. Where's that 747 GP? What's that pulling in right on the back of the stack there? She's track number one worldwide away, how about that? Oh, look at that shot there. The squadron returns home. Super, absolutely fantastic. It's a long walk in it from that terminal. So she'll go all the way round the other side, park up next to the ANA jet, I'd imagine. Uh, it's the only place, I believe, where there's a, uh, a twin deck. Hello, what's that? What's, what's Bimmons jet doing down at, at British Airways maintenance sheds? What's that all about? Oh yes, that's it, that is it, that is it. How do we get stickers if we don't have British stamps? Well, do what, just go and buy a, a load of stamps and obviously when you go to buy the stamps, go to the post office and say how much to send a small letter. Well, a funny old attitude on that Dreamliner, look. Or 350 or whatever it is. It's a bit odd, wasn't it? Lost a lot of altitude there. Well, didn't lose a lot of that, but was in a very down, a downward angle. <laughs> Get her in the inside. Oh, okay, okay, so uh, I'm wrong then. I'm completely wrong. I didn't realize that there was a double, um, there was a, There you go. So there is a um, a double deck. Yeah, that's a three fifty. Here we go. In front of him. Oh, that's great. They've put her in on this runway, folks. Flaps are now full, I'd imagine. Fully configured for landing. Big freighter, this is a freighter, ladies and gentlemen, not a passenger jet. It's a regular service into Heathrow with Cafe Pacific, or Cafe Cargo, as they call it now, isn't it? Meantime, one of BA's 350-1000. This is the Trent XWB powered jet. Watch all the weight come down on the gear. Do if it wasn't for a bus going by. <laughs> wow. Okay, a little bit, a little bit of uh, thrust lever action. Okay. All set for the first big one of the day. 747. This is a is this a 400? It's a, is this an 800 or a 400? It looks like a 
look, looking at those engines, she's an 800, isn't she? Yeah, it's a Gen X engine. This is what we were talking about earlier, folks. Um, this is the uh, last variant of 747 with the GENX engine. Same that powers the Dreamliner, but uh, Boeing went exclusive with the Gen X. Not sure if uh, Trent were asked and maybe turned it down, I don't know, but. She's heavy. I don't know if it's electrical goods that they uh, that they bring on bring in on this jet. I'd imagine it probably you know that and other commerce, but you know not we're not talking about um, engines and you know uh, uh, OEM parts and uh, all that kind of thing it's mainly you know you might get some car parts on there uh, if there's an ad hoc um, if there's a certain amount of uh, space left on the aircraft and there's a the a, a broker has uh, booked an ad hoc space on the jet to bring in maybe some uh, some, some car spares or car parts from Dubai I don't know you know it just uh, the world of freight is an amazing thing the great thing with that dash 8 the intercontinental is the fact that uh, even though it's the super extended jet it still carries the uh, the old original Mark 1 front end on it so no extended deck on it Easy sound. Oh, we'll get it down there we go nicely done there we go okay oh right okay I'm on chat now folks Air Canada gave it 747s the nickname Fat Albert back in the day, Jill Watkins. Yeah. Wasn't the uh, Hercules also given the nickname Fat Albert? And talking about that, I've got a prop over the top of me. Oh, there it is. Blimey, look at that. Look at that. I'll never get that, mate. It is a Hercules. It's a bleeding Hercules. Royal Canadian Air Force. Wow. Shall I try? Shall I give it a go? No chance, mate. No chance. No, not even going to bother, mate, because she's, she's drab grey, isn't she? So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to see her against that sky. I really like it when... Uh, when operators um, take up the um, take up the uh, the option of having the anti-glare paint around the windshield of the um, of the 320, it it just gives it that final sort of like you know um, aesthetic uh, pleasurable look. Uh, Diane 78, there you go, Hercules flying over to the north of you, Royal Canadian Air Force, the RCAF. who um, helped us out massively during the bomber offensive in the Second World War. 460 Squadron, uh, one of the, the Royal Canadian Air Force 
Oh no, it's Australian Air Force, wasn't it? 460, sorry. Royal Australian Air Force. The RCAF. Um, so many squadrons. But did a great job for us. That is gnarly, man. That was a good showing by... Oh, yeah. We've got a... Oh, hello, hello. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's going on? What's going on here? Pulling into the back. Oh, the squadron are back. <laughs> what was that pulling across in front of it or going off from left to right there, Jilly? Was that just another aircraft that was... So that's pulling on to finals, uh, onto the final approach now. Um, basically, she's now... Um, Finnair 320. She's, they've just uh, contacted the tower. Um, fully established, BA, whatever it is. Speedbird, blah, blah. Uh, fully established, 10 miles maybe. I think it's around about 10 miles out that. Uh, just coming in over the um, over the city and the Thames and all that malarkey. It's great when you look right and you see the O2 and Wembley uh, with its half, um, yeah. And um, as a parliament, it's great at night. I have to say, London looks great at night. When I come back from a European show, I generally always travel back at night and land when. Uh, the city of London is looking splendiferous. Lufthansa. Sorry about that. See now with the the sun as it is. I'm happier when there's no... So, gear gonna be coming down soon, fully configured, nearly. Probably still gotta go flaps three, I would have thought. Not flaps three just yet. When they, uh, if, you've, if you watch that video that I put up yesterday, uh, and you'll hear the flaps when they start to retract. Or, sorry, extend, my apologies. And here come the main gear, body, uh, uh, wing gear first. And then once everything's done there and you feel the doors slam shut, then the body gear will start to fall backwards. Here it comes. Of course, during that sequence, maybe going full flap now. Flaps full, so to speak. Radar. What's that all about? Oh, there she is. Just coming through a thousand feet now. So she's already started the uh, the call outs with the um, with the altitude, the onboard altitude sensors. Getting that one thousand. So non-flying pilot monitoring the instruments, namely altitude, speed, rate of descent, that kind of stuff. Engines are sort of looking after themselves. Still autopilot at this stage, potentially. Coming off the autopilot in the next uh, 10 seconds or so, I'd imagine. If you're on a small Airbus, even with the door closed, you hear the bloop, 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 bloop as the autopilot alarm goes off to indicate that it's off and you are manually flying the aeroplane. 
Where's this one from, GP? LAX. Amazing aircraft, folks. You think about the, uh, the fact that she's been up at altitude 40 odd thousand feet or whatever, minus 60 plus degrees, minus 60 plus. So all the heat changes. won't use reverses with B8. Interestingly enough, they will do when they're overseas, which is funny. Here they'll run it all the way down. I guess there's a couple of elements there, you know, obviously very powerful brakes. You know, those huge, great big barn door speed brakes, ground spoilers on the wings there. Also using the outboard ailerons as well as, as uh, speed brakes. Um, and then, you know, obviously they open the reverses, um, that, well, they open the reverser sliders, the doors, um, and it goes into what's known as idle reverse. And apparently, even, um, even the idle reverse on these big, ginormous jets is as powerful as the full power of a takeoff of a, an old Trident, if you, know, if you remember those. I heard that from someone, Try uh, the Trident obviously being a... Uh, I think it was a Rolls-Royce Spey powered jet, three engines fixed at the back. And uh, just those two engines on the A380 enough in, the, in its uh, idle reverse to, um, to make some noise. Nine hours and 40 minutes. Let's just have a look. What else is interesting coming in folks? Let me know. I'm just coming to your chat now. Um, we've got gifters. Karina has gifted five memberships. Thank you, Karina. Uh, and we've got Sarah Louise gifting a membership. Mark Barr has also just gifted a membership as well. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, I'm going to try and switch my phone back up to the top again. Whether that's going to work, because I think the sun's just about to pop out from that cloud now anyway. So it's probably pointless at this stage. Possibly a... Uh, So we might have some uh, some very exciting news for you next week, folks. Um, we'll have to we, we, we're keeping it stum at the moment because uh, we don't want to sort of like um, uh, overstep the mark. I know I'm very excited. I'm terrible at giving people presents. Oh, go on, tell us what it is. No, 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 just a clue. Go on, give us a. All right, then it's. <laughs> I'm absolutely terrible. Are you there, Julie? Michael K. London is great day and night. M74, Ian Morrison, Josh Owen. Um, everybody saying thank you to Mark. Lufty Cargo, Diane 78. Do you know what? I was going to say that was a Lufty 777 freighter. Um, now, interestingly, when you look at that United 767, folks, the show that we were going to do on, uh, on Friday, uh, which we didn't do because of how late we were going into Friday afternoon with the, uh, with the workload and all that kind of stuff, because quite a lot of things had to be done for a submission um, so that's why we postponed it till next week but what we're going to do is we're going to do a playback Jerry Reacts show and it is one that features one of those 767s doing an unbelievable go around right in front of us here. It's going to be a lot of people on chat will remember that, but uh, very spectacular. Feet from the ground, literally feet from the ground. Uh, Brian Pound has gifted a membership. Thanks, Brian. 
Michael K. Wheels come down just before Hammersmith Bridge. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does depend on some some aircraft are very late in extending the gear. Um, it really does depend on the pilot themselves. I know that Emirates have an absolute minimum and maximum for uh, for, for for extending the gear. Um, too early or too late, and uh, they'll be in the office on Monday morning. What's the offload? Sink, there it is. See, when those reverser doors open there, there's guide vanes. There's a, there's a sort of like, you know, a circular guide vane that, uh, that goes all the way around the engine and then um, and, and is, is ever so slightly pointed forward. And then there's a, the, 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 en different engines do different things in terms of the reversers. Um, but, uh, but, you know, the best way to describe it is the blocker doors where, you know, if you can imagine um, you're, um, you've got a big wind blowing through your front door and you shut the door, what happens? It just stops blowing through, doesn't it? And the wind diverts back to the left or to the right or whatever. And that's more or less what these blocker doors do. Um, startup, smoky startup on that 767 Pratt Witness. It's notorious for smoky startups, these 767s. Let's just jump to this. 777 200 American Airlines. Watch the weight get transferred onto the undercarriage once the aircraft becomes a ground vehicle. Watch, watch, watch. stretch they've got in it as well man yeah look at that wall look around the engine don't look around the engine look at the engine. but look at the engine look around the engine there folks see all the uh the hot air being blown out of the side of the engine it literally creates a wall of air um, jet blast air which uh, if you can imagine it's like a shock wave in a funny sort of way in it Chris Donlan is a brand new member welcome Chris Karina we got your five thank you and zigzags it was it zigzag uh, RAF KC3 above Steve's a blimey how far behind the comments am I Right, shall I zip to the bottom? Zip zap. Business class is as it's my 50th. CPR, Voyager to the North, number three on flight radar. I've obviously missed that. Um, the uh, unmistakable profile of the A350. Big wide, end, wide offset on the engines. the brakes are on these things folks I mean you're sitting on that thing you still and you feel like you're really traveling even now and you can feel the brakes you can feel as they uh, as they put pressure on the brakes and and those boards that we see on the wings there those big boards that are up on the wings there uh, the 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 inboard boards are um, primarily to put more pressure on the undercarriage and therefore on the braking system itself to improve its, maximize its braking. You there, Julie? Okay. Have I, have I turned you down or something? Hey? Yeah, I got you, I can hear you. Sorry, I didn't have <laughs> it. 
Chrissy loves the livery. Grumpster, Emirates 385 minutes out. Thanks, Grumpster. Uh, Jimmy Ritter also confirming. Number six on long finals. Thank you, Jimmy Ritter. Uh, Bob Allen. Um, lots of people getting involved in Tell Me What's Coming In. I know uh, other channels put stuff up on the screen, but I like more interaction with you guys, folks. That's the way we do it. That's the way we've always done it. Um, we don't want to sort of like spoon feed with stuff. We just want people to um, interact and get involved. And there is, I think she's turning finals now. Here she comes up from the north. <laughs> Very strict procedures with Emirates. Wow, look at that. Just hang in there. Isn't it beautiful? She's obviously already uh, flaps one, two, possibly um, getting towards that flaps three, just finalizing the configuration of the aircraft. All to plan. Let's grab this. Uh, Turkish. He could make some noise. Brakes. All on the brakes, man. Now, of course, the what the reason why. Why you get that whining brake like that, squeaky brake, is because of the moisture that's uh, that's on the systems. And all of a sudden they're subject to very high temperatures, which is why sometimes you get those squeaky brakes. It's not like the pads worn down. I mean, um, you know, they do have pad wear indicators um, on these on the brake systems, but uh, they're not gonna run it like we used to on our old Ford Escorts where you're like, oh, it's got a mill left on it. I'll be all right for another 10,000 miles. Yoshi, Yoshi, Joshi, Jilly. Yoshi, Joshi, down here with his mate. Yoshi, Joshi, folks. Go on, in. Let's do it. <laughs> nice, so put it on reverse. There we go. Awesome. Nice one, fellas. Yoshi, Joshi, ladies and gentlemen. Mind that! <laughs> oh dear, bus is having a go at an Uber driver. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> What's he got now? Yeah, what's that Bimmon jet doing down here? Easy, easy. Might be a little bit of a course change there. Wow, Oscar Coles. This is his picture of the 380 that's on Flight Radar 24 for this aircraft. Oscar likes aviation. Wow, congratulations, mate. That then goes to show all these people who walk around with their cameras taking pictures, that's the reason why it's, so, it's great to be able to do that, uh, to submit great pictures. They never used that one for that Eurowings jet, did they? At, uh, the unmarked one that I flew on. 
No, 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 there is, there's seagulls around, yeah. At least it's not horses. <laughs> I showed it to someone yesterday and they were like, that is, that is pure comedy, that is. When I put my hands up in the air, like, what are you doing that for? <laughs> Trying to talk to them like they understand the human race language, you know. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, now these guys uh, usually um, give it full beans. Inboard reverses only on the A380, folks. We've talked about it many times before and the reasons behind it. But only inboard reverses on the A380 engine. The other ones are not fitted with reverses. So it's not like they can suddenly go, oh, you know what we're going to use four. Because two is enough with all those big 16 wheels of braking and that's one wheel with about four brake systems on each wheel so you calculate it and then those big barn door speed brakes that they've got ground spoilers ish cuts at all they've got a headwind so that's gonna sort of like uh, make a big ch difference in the in the in the braking distance still using the full runway but might sometimes give a last little bit of just to get off at that exit but that was definitely idle reverse there idle power Wow, she's got a long way down the runway. Yeah, wow. Look at that. Blimey. No, no, she's all she's a long way down there, but this uh, oh this is is this Air China? Looks like it. With that nose band. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, retard. Yeah. Look how slowly they bring the front end down, nice and soft. Yeah. And they do that by way of the elevators. Oh, here we go. Just a little bit. Oh, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Congestion going on over there. Uh, Joshua Atkin saying, I find the A350 shape very unique, more or less, more or less like the 78, 787. Well, they do have a lot of, um, uh, ex, uh, you know, characteristics about the 350 versus the 787, most definitely in there. If, when you put them next to each other, you can definitely see the difference in the, you know, the wing, for example. Obviously, the um, the uh, the nose of the aircraft's the most distinctive part of it. I have to say that I think the Dreamliner has a slightly sort of like broader tail section on it, the vertical stabilizer, whereas the A350 has quite a, a spindly one. But there's no wing like that. Oh.
see how that wing flexes, man. Look at the wing, how it's way above the fuselage. Somewhere in the region, the A380, can you believe it? The A380 wing flexes somewhere in the region of 13 feet. One, three, folks. Um, it's not something that's so visible when you're, uh, when you're watching it, you know, from an angle like this. Whereas, obviously, with the Dreamliner and the 777 and the 350, in fact, um, when you see them at full flex, uh, at a, 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 you know, banking out. But if you know what you're looking for, um, as you can see, that 380, now the wing is sagged. It's basically in a negative. And it's at that position that it feels the most uncomfortable. Um, because it feels more comfortable when it's uh, when its wings are flexed upwards and she's uh, Flies like a bird in the sky Even the 767 look at that It's 11 foot tall winglet on it But um, I remember reading a few weeks back about the, uh, here's a customer who's had, you know, issues with their Pratt & Whitney's. I don't know if it, if it ever actually happened, but I did hear that Lufthansa were, uh, were, were ordered a batch of 320 Neos with the Leap engine because they were so um, dissatisfied with the uh, with the, the Pratt & Whitney engine, even though the Pratt & Whitney engine, um, it's it's a geared turbofan, isn't it? Whereas the Leap engine is not a geared turbofan, I believe. I think it's, it's that all the other way around. Um, but basically, and that's, that's not the problem that they're having with, is the gearing, you know, um, it's to do with uh, materials in the in the fan blade well in the compressor blades not the fan blades there's nothing wrong with the fan blades and now they've got a compressor disc apparently uh, issue with a select number of aircraft that can be changed out a bit like a clutch disc assembly where you're able to sort of like uh, you know there is there's a certain amount of maintenance uh, that the that the airlines can carry out on site, um, but when it goes deeper into the engine, when there are issues uh, like they've been having with uh, uh, some engines, uh, well, to be honest with you, it happens all, all the time. Um, but uh, these guys here at Virgin, that that aircraft has been sitting there for a good few months now, I think. Where's their newest A350? Um, that's not her there sitting at. Uh, sitting outside the uh, the hangar is it their new three 350 sorry 350 did i say 350 330 probably did i probably did See the engine power drop, the power, the note of the engine drop. That's when they uh, retard the, uh, the power on the engines and let it literally fall because they're, they're at that point. He's looking quite old now, these Air India 350s, aren't they? Real workhorse during the pandemic, daily. Uh, Chrissy, Captain Chris flew the new Virgin Bird a few days ago. Great footage on his Instagram. Wow, how cool is that? Lucky chap. Screaming Emu, he's a pilot. He's actually a captain with JetBlue, folks. My company is anticipating something like 15 jets idle on the ground at any given time, owing to issues with the 1500G. Wow, there we go, you see. That's a that's not good, man. So this is a max. Bosh. 
Or is it 707? Or is it 727? No, it's a max. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. That's insane. Um, yeah, so those Pratt & Whitney engine issues are... Uh, I mean, you know what? Um, uh, Rolls-Royce were very lucky. F f forgive me for saying this, but they were very lucky with the pandemic because so many aircraft were sat idle. Uh, they had the opportunity to inconvenience the uh, operators um, as much as they possibly could because of the pandemic. They weren't flying the aeroplanes and therefore the aeroplanes were sat idle and Rolls-Royce were able to sort of like scoot around, pick these engines up and, um, and, uh, and repair them uh, or revise them. And it was a full strip down as well on each engine, which is why it's not sort of like a, what's classified as an on-wing repair or maintenance, on-wing maintenance. Listen to that thing. Right, okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Folks, uh, bear with me, please. <sighs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite um, uh, 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 um, disappointed with Google. You know, uh, I've, I've recently I've had, uh, you know, on the homepage when you go on Google, when you when you go to your search normal search bar, blah blah blah, on your homepage on your phone. It gives you all the sort of like latest news of, of things that you follow kind of thing, you know. Um, and, uh, don't you? And it's bloody recently, man. It's like, it's like some, some, you know, like, there was like a, a thing on like, like alert, aircraft, you know, aircraft um, uh, 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 calls emergency, you know, on descent into Joburg, you know. All it was was, you know, incapacitated, you know, some, not, not an incapacitated pilot, but just, um, you know, yeah, I know, man, no, no, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 I mean, some of the news is interesting, but a lot of it is clickbait, man, a lot of it is clickbait, and it's not good, man, because it, you know, it just wastes your time opening it up, like, you know, man nearly dies, well, he didn't get an inch, he's nowhere near die. It's like, <laughs> you know, crisis averted. Okay, we're back on the um, we're back on the old thing fong now. So let's give this a go. Okay, there we go. Uh, Bean Huffer. Beanhuffers gifted five memberships. If I've missed your gifting, I do apologise, folks. I've got the cap, the video, uh, the phone back up now in its normal position. John Grinham, British Airways should do one land or livery on an A320 like Lufthansa. Yeah, it would be good to see. Uh, good to see. Well, the thing is that, to be honest with you, folks, we haven't got. You know, airlines are only just starting now to 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 get back in the in the black. Um, so, you know, uh, it costs a lot of money to do something like that. So maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I like the way that, uh, if, if anything, they should do it on a, a new 320 Neo, uh, a land or livery or something like that. Um, I see that, is it Delta have got a 350 waiting for its engines? Um, Delta's got a 350 down at um, Toulouse waiting for its engines and it's in the Los Angeles is it 2018 uh, 20, 2018 2028 uh, 2028 livery uh, Olympics I think I think I'm right to say is it Los Angeles again uh, well I say again um, it's been a long time 
Uh, but anyway, uh, looks very smart, but she's sitting up at the back of the bike sheds. Ash Morris and Jerry, where you, were you there when BA38 crashed just short of the runway in 2008? No, I wasn't. Um, I don't know where I was on that day. 2008? Yeah, I would have been, I would have been busy, I would have been busy, you know, in the, um, in my other business. Always looking up at the sky. Probably saw it on the news, I would imagine. But uh, as far as... Oh, really? Oh, new Virgin 355 minutes out. Awesome. There we go. There we go. Uh, thank you, Thomas Mags, for that. Oh, well, our first sighting of Virgin's 350. New, new car smell. It's funny. Um, someone, put a, someone put a post out the other day on Twitter, and it said, what's your favourite smell? New car, new shoes, um, and new something else. And, and I put new plane. Yin Cafe Spotter, Aaron Thomas, uh, 2008, I was in school. Uh, Gareth Blair, anyone know if BA will be swapping out their 777 200s anytime soon? Good question that, Gareth, um, because, you know, I think BA's average age on their 777 200 fleet is around about 24 years. That's average age, obviously some older than that some younger than that but uh interesting isn't it that um you know you know they they're, they're desperate i mean our ba are desperate to 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 modernize their fleet most definitely obviously they're doing it with the i think they've got quite a lot invested in um as far as the the, the, the wide body fleet goes i think they've got quite a lot invested in boeing you know unless um Unless anybody knows any, uh, 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 you know, otherwise, whether they've got options that they can cancel. Of course, BA being a customer uh, for the 7779, um, which is probably, you know, we're looking at 2020, I would have said 2026 at the earliest before the 7779 is, is operational, I think. Um, it's all about um, it's all about licensing and certification of that aircraft. Um, of course, Boeing are no longer able to self-certify, which I know it sounds quite uh, crazy to anybody um, that anyone uh, that any manufacturer would be able to self-certify without having a, a governing body um, uh, certify the aircrafts independently. But believe it or not, Boeing. Not all of their jets, but some of their jets or some of their equipment has been self-certified. And I believe that might be the case with the 737 um, MAX 7. Is this, the, is this the new jet? She's clean, man. She's clean. Wow. Never, never land. Oh, is it Peter Pan? Right, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, kind of. John Grimman loving the 787 on the on Binham. Binham. Yeah, it's interesting that Bimman jet that's uh, that's parked up in BA maintenance. Anybody got any info on that? I probably I've asked it a couple of times, and you've probably answered me a couple of times. But uh, I might be missing you. Fly SSC one BM Bimman seven eight seven is a looker. Why are we talking about that? Is it on its way? But look at that, a Bimman seven eight seven parked up down at BA maintenance. 
I'm thinking that is possibly an engine related issue, uh, tech, some kind of technical issue. Um, you know, pressurization, hydraulics, more likely electrical because uh, of course it's a very uh, electric jet, isn't it? Talking of old aeroplanes. It's it's not a uh, it's not a something that's done purposefully aero braking. However, when you are rolling the, the nose up like that uh, to bring it down nice and slowly and softly and not wallop, wallop it on the ground, um, that is a form of aero braking, uh, and that's all done using the elevators just to sort of like that. nice and smoothly bring the front end down. Sarah Louise, that was Wendy Darling, Scott Thompson, Stoma Viking. Thought that Dreamliner said Bimman. Uh, Bin Man on the tail for a second. Um, Greg Dillon delivered on the 15th, I think that was. Jerry, what is your favourite plane, Joshua? Asking. Don't really have one, um, Joshua, um, because they're all beautiful. Um, is that Bimman a replacement for the one in the BA lot, Stephen Luscombe? I'd imagine so. Oh, and, uh, climbing out in there. Uh, in the so yeah, folks. The other thing is that when we um, when we play back the um, the reaction show, that bird look. Uh, when we play the reaction show, uh, which will probably be next Friday, I'd imagine. Um, because it was uh, the great thing with flight radar, I think this applies to anybody with gold membership and above, but we'll have to see. Um, it's very clever. They, they basically have a, um, a history tab. They have a history tab on flight radar 24. And you're able to wind back to any particular was it 20 was it 10 years Jilly 10 years if you're a business that is a year on gold so um, yeah you can wind back up to a year if you're on gold but with business and unfortunately it's quite expensive I understand and appreciate that but we will be able to um, literally when we play that video out which is from when Jilly that storm was it storm Noah Last April, was it? I thought it was a long time ago. Oh, blimey, okay. So, so gold members will be able to uh, watch that back. But basically, we can look at an old video and um, watch Flight Radar, literally, um, by the second. All we have to do is sort of like tune it, don't we? Like, that one's landing now. Okay, let's put that one at zero feet. Okay, start playing it now, isn't it? Is that right? Is that way to do it? That's the way to do it! Michael K. Yes, indeed. Um, BA777. A very, very fortunate uh, turn of events uh, and one of those major fortunate turn of events a bit like Scully uh, somebody on board that aircraft able to communicate very quickly with his um, with his um, well it was the captain wasn't it that was bringing it in and the uh, the first officer I mean it was the captain who brought the flaps up only by one increment uh, and that gave them enough lift uh, continued lift to make it over the line literally make it over the line and belly flop just forward of the uh, of the of 27 left Damn it. 
much actually. The boys down at the LFB have got uh, have got some pictures on the wall of that. Is that a uh, an engine sitting in a rack? Is it or is that a uh, is that an engine on wing? No, it's definitely not an engine on wing. That's an engine sitting on a rack in it. Look at that. How cool is that, man? Screaming Amy, Fly SSC1, Algernon Sour Gravy. Um, damn, couple of, could have been catastrophic if they hadn't have done that. Yes, indeed. Um, very quick thinking, because no power, no engine power. Just completely lost the engines. It's like you're cutting out your car engine. You've got to, all you've got left is, well, brakes and um, maybe... Uh, slow it with the gears or something like that but um, Bruce Motu BA38 air crew should have been awarded the George medal for their quick thinking a great piece of airmanship it was I think it was mainly down to the captain but uh, great communications between the two of them acting very quickly um, Maybe the captain gave the command for flaps two or something like that, or flaps three. Uh, not can't remember what it is on the um, the settings on the on the triple seven on the Boeing. Obviously one, two, three, and full, isn't it on the on the Airbus? So um, is it degrees on the uh, on the Boeing? Ellen M1 Air 747, uh, what is it? 40 minutes out, the next... Uh... Okay. 767 on the smoky starter. 11 feet, 11 feet tall, those winglets. Oh, screaming emu, it was the first officer who was flying. Wow, there you go, wow, so it was... But was it the, was it the captain who made the decision to pull the to pull the flaps. Jeffrey Phillips, they are in degrees. There we go. So uh, I think it's uh, Captain Manny. There we go. Degrees on the Boeing. Thank you. Jeremy Stokes, we're using Panasonic VX1 is the camera we're using, sir. 10, 20, 30 and 40 Trev Lion and that's degrees I'm thinking. Captain Manny, 1, 5, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so uh, differing, but I'll take Ma uh, Captain Manny on that, seeing as he's, <laughs> he's Bangkok Billy, uh, Michael K. That's why time in the simulator training is important. Indeed it is. Um, it's an extremely unlikely and very unlucky event i can't think um of of of, of any other um issue incident that's had that where uh, where that uh, an aircraft obviously there have been incidents very close to the ground uh, last seconds of approach but in terms of a jet losing both its engines uh, at that at that last minute i mean you obviously trained for that i'm guessing but um you know, I, I, Kevin in A400 overhead, number one, but also 25.6 years old, the United 777, Pratt & Whitney 4000 engines. Okay, so, um, so Jordan Charlie saying there that uh, in the interview. Yes. 
saying that the captain rolled back um, uh, pulled the flaps up or reduced the flap setting is this guy going to be alright here? is this guy going to be alright? let's just double check make sure we're not going to Ooh, just about, just about. That was quite close. Yeah, retracting the flaps by that small amount made all the difference. Gave the first officer a um, tiny little bit more lift, if that's what you could call it, for extension. Wow, he nailed that one. It's obviously what the flaps do. Um, that's why they are extended in the um, in the increments that they are to maintain the um, the glide slope, so to speak, a uh, a controlled rate of descent, both speed and height. Um, but in order to do that, you kind of need the engines um, to speed up um, if you need to. Um, in which that's exactly what they were looking for, more power, um, because the aircraft with the flaps at full uh, will slow much quicker. Uh, so, you know, by, by bringing the flaps up by even just that one degree or five degrees or whatever it was, I'm guessing they would have been at full flaps um, and therefore up to 25 or something like that, or back to 25 perhaps. One is leading edge slats. Thanks, Matt. Oh, tank command. It is tank command. Thank you. Flaps. One is leading edge uh, slats. And they do have incremental movements on the slats as well. I've certainly noticed it on the, uh, on the Airbus that the slat has also uh, uh, two degrees of setting, I think, or two different separate settings. One in full, possibly. I don't know. Dan, indeed, the BA777 that uh, caught fire in Las Vegas is indeed still flying, and we see her regularly, don't we? I mean, not, you know, regularly, regularly, but uh, they repaired her. It was a 300, wasn't it? Nice. See what I mean about that... Uh, that black surround, the eyeliner on the... Uh, on the on the flight deck glass. It uh, looks real smart. Scott Thompson, A320, better world livery for out. Next journey, which I'm not 100% sure about. Nick Gray. Uh, Uh, David Ace, are there any other airlines that name their planes besides Virgin? Well, I think that's mainly the American carriers, isn't it? Or, uh, I think. Good question, that. Joshua Atkins, all depends on the, um, on the movements, what runway is preferable, but, uh, I love both of them for whatever, you know, they have all have their own unique positions. Fly SSC1. Where did this mishap Hatton happen? Well, it was Hatton, wasn't it? Hatton Cross uh, over the other side of Tut um, if we had seen it coming in it would have uh, it belly flopped around about that point didn't it on the field um, very lucky that they managed to literally glide it over the fence and clear the fence had it been uh, had it not been for their quick thinking um, it could have been a lot more disastrous because it's obviously um, uh, the um, the uh, the runway lights you know the approach lights uh, the ILS as well, the instrument landing system, that itself is a, uh, a big entanglement potentially. Uh, and of course the road, 
the main, is it the A30, uh, would have been a bit of a bleeding disaster. I'm quite surprised that none of the clickbaiters have, have sort of like, um, what could have happened? Brian Stewart looks like United will likely lease some 321 Neos because of the max delays. There we go. Wow. Now this is where this is where the leading lease uh, companies. There are literally a handful of major lease companies um, that handle leasing to operators like Virgin Atlantic, for example, um, but they also do ad hoc leases, short-term leases, whether it's on a, a, a wet lease or a dry lease, a dry lease obviously being where they will just supply the aircraft with no crew, a wet lease being where they will uh, supply the air crew and uh, sometimes the, um, the cabin crew as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's gonna cost them a lot of money. It's going to cost Boeing a lot of money. However, they would be paying the money for the um, for the for the for this for, for the 737 Max anyway, in terms of the operating costs. Um, and one thing Boeing wants to hope is that they don't uh, operate those 321 Neos for a great deal of time and turn around to Boeing and say, you know what, we don't really want them. Um, these 321s are uh, are very efficient for us, um, so we don't really want the Maxes anymore. Do you mind if we? Cancel the contract. Cancel the contract. Massive. Uh, yeah. Depends on what. Do they have the option? It's, it's, uh, these days, the um, you know um, the operators won't literally, you know, sign. In terms of ordering them, they generally uh, put a letter of intent down. Uh, will then issue that to the um, to, to the to the airframer. Um, and the airframer will probably not start production of that aircraft until you know it's literally uh, signed and sealed because um, obviously there are a lot of cancellations that go on in the industry for whatever reasons it might be but you usually find that um, you know when you hear Ebb, uh, Virgin Atlantic for example are taking delivery of a new A350 that is via a, um, a lease contract with a with one of the major lease companies uh, they're not buying it for cash going down there with a suitcase full of readies there you go governor <laughs> easy son easy nicely done Sailor Mike mentioned earlier, but did anyone see that United 767 had a, a crinkle on the fuselage from a rough, la rough landing? Uh, has been repaired and to test flying. How long ago was that? I seem to remember uh, a, um, an incident where an aircraft, I think it was a freighter though, where, uh, where an aircraft had, uh, had landed heavy and Increased the um, the join around where the oh look he's just come out mate and he's got a plaster on him. Well, it's not often that you see that, is it? A half nacelle. God, I tell you what, when they f when they fire up, they start cooking here at the Renaissance man for the evening meals. It's just a constant waff of garlic and lovely cooking smells and all that sort of thing um, but that's interesting isn't it you don't often see that uh, a half repair so that's literally a a nacelle that has been repaired but not painted that has been literally how have they joined that those two segments together some kind of fuss. I can't think that. Mind you, it is. It is obviously. Um, 
we have to have a closer look at because I thought it was one complete um, panel, if you know what I mean. Oh, 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 easy, son, easy. Oh, we don't like that. Pilot induced, not wind shear. Uh, obviously um, quite disruptive those winds that have now turned into a, a bit of a crosswind element now that's quite interesting a north westerly is it see the sock look at it so I've got a bit of ground effect air there this is the tread 700 Oh yeah, didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite interesting. That to see that. It is it in is it in two sections? The nacelle. I'm guessing it is. Adam is a brand new superclass member. Welcome, Adam. Bang straight in there. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Um. Shear alert because and tell that that was not a wind shear um, induced go around um, is because the undercarriage was retracted almost immediately. Um, whereas with a wind shear alert, the um, it's a, or wind shear toga, uh, it's it's a uh, well, wind shear go around. It's actually. Um, a lot longer before the gear is, is retracted. Screaming emu, the sock was limp. <laughs> Roy Van Cam. Jeff Lyon, Mark Arnold. That was very nose up. Oh, they are two different sections. Thank you, Jordan. Lowy family. Okay, so that is obviously a uh, primed cow section. It's not often that you see that though, that's, that's the odd thing about it. Smart looking 320. Oh, 220, sorry. Yeah, they give as good as they get the old uh, Pratt and Whitney's if they want a little bit of stopping power. It's got to be honest with you, in all the years I've been doing this, and it is a few, I can tell you, uh, I've never seen a half repaired cow. Look at that. Isn't she old, man? Look how, look how that paint is all old and faded, man. Captain Manny, March 23rd was the 15th anniversary of FedEx Flight 80. Lost two brethren. Was that the DC-10 um, or MD-11 that uh, ground looped? I think it was. What a great, sh what a great shame. I think that was wind induced, wasn't it? That was uh, wind related, wasn't it? That um, Flight 80 with FedEx. 321 now tracking number 10 on flight radar.
What's that? Chris Fleet, when I started my training as an ATCO, I held uh, I held at terminal control when it used to be up the road in West Drayton whenever there was a go around uh, the tower would sound an alarm on approach. There we go. Just to uh, wake everyone up. <laughs> what what was it? What what is it? Oh right, it's going around here. <laughs> Terry Struth. Mr. E. Presley the second. <laughs> oh, oh, I off my shoes and step on my blue sweat shoe. Lee Air Videos. Good afternoon to you. Chris Fleet in the approach room to alert the controls it had occurred. Okay, saves a phone call. There we go. Yeah, well, there you go. It does, doesn't it? Alert, alert. This old um, 777-200 passing his sisters or brothers. It's just one of the, uh, I think one of the, either either one of the later or one of the earlier GE 90 powered 777-200s. Going out for, uh, going out to fly, but on this side, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Don't get the hum of the trends with the GEs. Greg Dillon, that triple seven was only delivered in 2014. So she's not that old, wow. Oh, which one, the 200 or the 300? Thanks, Greg. 26 years old, this triple uh, seven, by the sounds of it, Dan, thank you. So that's one of the older triple seven. 200s but Ben Sullivan welcome Ben joining us on Big Jet TV membership uh, all you um, all you members who've joined up all you premium members you you, you automatically unlock the all the um, archives I'm right so now aren't I Jelly? Yeah, because all the shows, all the first class and super class shows of the past, which have been and gone, uh, people still watch them. But as a new premium member, you can check out where we go around the world by literally um, browsing through um, the history of Big Jet TV and see where we've been. And it is amazing to watch back sometimes when we, when we sit there and we see people uh, looking at different shows from different times and stuff like that. Craig Hicks, one air 747, just off the UK coast. Thank you, Craig. Michelle Bartlett. Blue Sky, Kirsty Allen. Looks like a very fancy livery for China Southern coming in, Kirsty. I think that's probably the, um, possibly the, uh, the 787 livery. I think that's the one that uh, Boeing paint themselves um, and it doesn't cost the operator anything because uh, Boeing are putting their uh, their livery on it well they there's you know the aircraft uh, the aircraft type on it 787 I've seen that on, on a few airliners tales from the hope tales from the hovel <laughs> Brilliant. Chrissy been watching Storm Eunice again. That damn train horn gets me every time. Train horn. Oh, okay. I don't know. Nick Hulse has gifted a membership. Thank you, Nick. Wadders, good afternoon to you. Captain Kirk from Ireland. Ben Sullivan, been watching Big Jet TV for ages now. Thanks, Jerry and team for the work you do. Love the Sunday show. 
Thank you, Ben. Um, as I reported earlier on, folks, wow, 6,000 people tuning in. Hope you're well. This is that beautiful China Southern livery. Watch, looks, it's got 787 written on the front of it. I think Boeing paint this for now. Ben Sullivan uh, is a brand new member. Welcome, Ben. Um, I got him, didn't I? Premium. Welcome, Ben. Uh, Nick Hulse, we've got a, a membership. Thank you. And Adam has gifted five memberships. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, everybody. Uh, like I say, if you're a brand new member, um, you have automatically unlocked everything um, in terms of our, uh, our files and... Um, back catalogue or whatever you want to call it this looks like Korean did Adam just gift another five I think he did Adam's just gifted another five memberships that's very kind of you sir thank you Koreans triple seven just making um, announcements with Korean uh, for New A350 orders. Look at that, look at that. I think they've uh, at least uh, put an LOI in, a letter of intent with, uh, with Airbus, the air framers, uh, for orders of the A350. And um, has I think they've I think they've also got um, have they got options on the triple seven nine have Korean on I, I, I seem to think that they are a potential customer um, but certainly um, new for them with the a350 that is isn't it Liz Matthewman Valerie Dickinson watched your Manchester show yesterday Jerry rejected takeoff and a wheel nose problem Great show with Johnny, yeah. Wow. That was the very first Manchester show. How about that? Daniel Craig. Welcome back, Daniel. Rachel Dickinson, Paul Skilling. Um, loving the uh, delivery of the Korean jet, I'm guessing. Looks dirty. Uh, Jorge saying... Um, I'm guessing that Jorge Branco. Is that right, Jorge? Have I pronounced it right? Playing guess the jet with my wife Tracy Peter Sutton. Just correctly guess the China Airways 787. Oh yeah. It's a bit like um, back in the old days with do 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 Me and my sisters used to sit there and guess the uh, uh, who could get the age first. Julie Smith eight from. Per Steve Smith at 10 years old. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about, Jelly? When they put a picture up and he used to say the age on him. <laughs> Do you know 11? <laughs> I always run because I just shouted really loud so you couldn't even hear the others. <laughs> Surprise that. Uh, Joe Thompson, Emirates A380, 28 minutes out. We've got another Emirates jet inbound. Usually very uh, strict in their uh, ins and outs procedures with Emirates. So you likely see um, when this one is on its way in, another one will be literally um, preparing for departure. Oh, Craig Hicks, this is the Toga 320. Uh, or, or have I already missed it? <laughs> This looks like, uh, this look, yeah, this is it, isn't it, is it? Oh, easy. He's still not happy, look. 
Hey! Big round of applause from the... So, old timers like myself could quite easily, uh, from a distance, in a silhouette um, arrangement, quite easily mistake the 321 for a 757 with the hybrid winglet on it as well. One air, 747, 10 minutes out, chirping bird. Um, yeah, well, that's going to be great to catch, isn't it? It's two jumbos in one day, isn't it? Two jumbos in one day. <laughs> There's a house mark, is it? Crowded house, that was it. Screaming emu. That looked tentative. Yes, indeed it is. Second time around. Second time around. <laughs> so many songs you can put to play, isn't there? G. BYAA went to Birmingham this morning to see the 747-400 uh, ROM cargo depart. Long screaming low over Sheldon Country, Country Park. Wow! Is that the Sheldon Country Park in the dip at the bottom of the runway where we've um, filmed from a couple of times uh, with all the local brummies there. And they're walking their dogs. Daniel Craig. Did I get Daniel Craigie as a new member? I think I did. Dave Carr, nervous passengers. Sing along Sunday with Jerry. <laughs> Moonlight as a singer, no. Uh, Jan. Um, Jan Kachko. Gifted a membership. Thank you, Jan. I think it is Jan. Thank you very much indeed. That's very kind. Cool. Uh, screaming Emi, either pilot can call a go around and the flying pilot has to honour it. No transfer, no transfer of, of control is required. Wow. So yeah, that's interesting. So and, and, and of course, that didn't used to be the case. Obviously, they, um, they've had quite a few um, incidents, haven't they? Uh, namely with uh, Chinese operators many, many moons ago where, um, you know, the, the, the captain's superiority overrode everything. And very rarely would the uh, the FO or whoever, you know, back in the days when there was a flight engineer, they'd all just stay quiet because um, actually watch the Cathay Pacific. Um, no, sorry, the Korean 747 disaster at, um, was it Manchester or was it um, Stansted? I think it was Stansted, wasn't it? Or Luton or Stansted, yeah. Um, was partially down to um, the, 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 the first officer um, not overriding the, the captain because well it's not so much overriding the captain but just keeping stum um, he should have grabbed the wheel or grabbed the yoke and said I have control and then um, because his uh, artificial horizon was working perfectly along with the backup whereas the captain's wasn't uh, as a result of a, um, a malfunction in the equipment. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, just about could have saved that aircraft had it not been for, uh, for, for him um, being scared of the captain tearing him off a strip, if you know what I mean. Daniel Burns definitely stands did indeed. Gordon Freeman, we have assumed control. KLM chief pilot was largely responsible for Tenerife, yes, Clipper 707. Uh, Dimitri 747 approaching the, oh, there she is, long range. Let's see if we can grab her. Oh, it's going to be a tricky one, I need to. Kind of gone out of my view now. Oh, there she is. Okay. No, no, I've got it. I've got it. I'm, I'm tracking it. I'm tracking it.
So these guys basically, this aircraft is continually in use. Uh, it makes them no money when she's sitting on the ground um, and not flying. So we, uh, we do see these guys at one air in regularly, but um, for, for short periods of time. They might, she might sit there for overnight or something like that, um, waiting for other freight to come in, uh, to come in or, or for, a, for another operation that's maybe the next day. But um, in general, these guys at One Air doing, being very successful. Got two jets now, haven't they? Is it two, have they got two 747s now? One Air? Pure 747, 400 freighters though. A220, very spaceship-like front end on it. Yes, please. Gonna have to be out with that. Uh, CPR, if anyone's tracking F5Y480, please switch to HC311 and get it to number one. Okay, don't know what the difference is, 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 is there. We got the wrong aircraft or something. Wow, look at that, just trotting on. Looks so gracious without her gear down, doesn't it? The 747. It's a beautiful looking bird, man. Here come the gear now. All at once on the jumbo, unlike the 380. Everything drops all at once. An amazing thing to watch if you ever get the chance. Lots of examples of it on YouTube. CPR HC 311. Um, what is HC 311 then? Is that uh, is this the one? Is it is it the one air jet? JF number two for the jumbo right now. Thank you, JF 840. Avro Arrow. The style of the A220 is a winner in my book. Yeah, and I, that I, you can see why um, Airbus picked up the um, you know bought it from Bombardier I mean it's uh, it's not often you hear that is it where a you know a, a, an airframer will will buy not so much buy out an, an, an airframer but buy out the um, buy out a specific type of aircraft So I don't think Bombardier would have struggled at all for sales, but I think uh, Airbus just uh, offered them just such a, a big carrot that they were like, you know what, take it, you know, probably take us, you know, cover all the costs of developing the aircraft. It would have maybe taken them many, many years to recoup those costs and start getting into the black Whereas uh, what Airbus came along with was an opportunity to uh, flaps full. Yeah, 
Yes, Sailor Mike mentioned that Nolan or uh, 737 200 a few weeks back. It's also uh, been certified to operate on gravel runways. Can you believe it? First operated in 1976. Oldest commercial jetliner. She's number one at 100 feet. There we go. Oh, it's a 400. So the new one is a 200 feet. 400. Um, it's a PAX jet, next passenger jet. So that's a converted freighter now, folks. It's the new one that they've just uh, acquired that is um, that is the pure the pure freighter. The non-converted type. Jumbo jet. Sue Williams, Tony Duty. Number one. Hoskin, we've got the unit to number one. What a unit. Tell you what's purring its way up here now is this lovely old. Uh... Is he going? He's coming up this way? Yeah, Delta 330. 300. You can hear her engines, man. Martin P. Bombay John. <laughs> Some great names. K pop lover. Wilmot Harper. What freight comes into London Heathrow rather than Stansted or EMA? Isn't it more expensive? Well, Wilma, there are, there are regular operations, uh, freight operations into London Heathrow. Um, the ones on the Cathay Pacific, we don't know quite what, you know, these are all ad, mostly ad hoc operations that you'll see with one air. So it could be uh, perishables, it could be stuff for the supermarkets. And of course, if that's the case, and uh, it's, um, you know, the transport road network here is, uh, is just as close as, um, you know, just so long as it's being utilized uh, in the south and not uh, destined for the north. Um, because that would obviously seem pretty pointless when they could use, like you say, uh, East Midlands or Stansted, read all about it, um, or Birmingham, um, whichever. But there's obviously reasons around it um, uh, in terms of what freight and what, what, what one must also appreciate is that the. Um, all the the, um, the scheduled flights that we see with uh, Virgin Atlantic and all of them, all of them, all the, all the Eastern flights, the Eastern operators, you know, the US operators, the British operators, they all have belly freight as well. Um, when you um, when you go flying and you see your aircraft at gate uh, being worked on by the ground teams and so on and so forth, the fuelers, you know the. Um, the ground support teams and all that you will invariably see uh, freight going onto the aircraft um, we're not talking about huge amounts like you would do on a pure 747 freighter but we're talking about um, you know a good fair amount of tonnage especially on a 777 that the operators will use that um, the, the, the operator themselves will um, it's it's very um, it's a good money spinner, let's put it that way. 
uh, freight um, operations on board private jets. Uh, pri sorry, um, these um, these commercial services like this American Triple, she'll be carrying freight, um, which will all probably cover the cost of the oper of the oper the operational cost of this aircraft to a certain degree. Nice engine shot. Still going. See the heat coming out the side of the engines there, folks. Screaming emu who, uh, who brought that one up some time ago. Uh, makes perfect sense that the, the, um, the air that's blown out of the engine, forced out of the engine by whatever means, whether it's uh, um, a, a system of plugs around the uh, the high bypass, the bypass, the engine bypass, and then the fan blade. Cold air is used to slow the aircraft down, although it is mixed with the hot air as well, um, as you can see from the heat being um, thrown out of the side of the engine. But generally, that is uh, that air is bl being blown ever so slightly forward, but not sort of, not sort of like what I thought when I was a kid, you know, that it was blown out of the front of the engine. It's not blown out of the side and it, it creates a wall of air, which is like a shock wave almost. Um, and it's, and it, and it, it, it creates a break, um, which is very clever, obviously. Been around for many, many years, but different variants of it, different types of reverse thruster systems. Um, like, for example, the old um, clamshell that we will see on the well, it's pretty unique, I have to say, on the Trent 700, isn't it? Daniel Burns EK29, just over Essex. Ranji turning in from uh, India. Good day to you, Ranji. Um, might want to hang around, Ranji, because the last uh, operation of the day that we're how far out, actually? We, 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 we could probably tune into it now, can't we, Jilly? The Air India operation, uh, due in around about five to seven. We're hoping that that's going to be on time because that's going to be our sort of like closeout shot. That's the plan anyway. It's early, is it? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Jerry, just wondering what are the reasons for changing operations at airport? Chris asking. Wind, Chris. Uh, wind direction, normally. Um, you will see uh, runway changes at different airports around the world. Um, but not only in terms of, uh, oh, easy, easy, there we go, she's down. Uh, however, uh, what we see here in terms of runway operations, not directions, runway operations, uh, when they are on 27 operations here at London Heathrow daily, um, every day, without fail, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon is the switchover. Um, and that is based on a very old hand, uh, gentleman's handshake agreement. Um, from many, many years ago, way, way back in the old days when Heathrow had like five runways. Um, it's called the Cranford Agreement. If you Google it, C-R-A-N-F-O-R-D, Cranford Agreement, London Heathrow, you'll be able to read exactly what I'm talking about um, in terms of the local community uh, giving them a break from the approaching aircraft um, each day, whether they're taking off or approaching, whichever. So the Cranford area, which is to my left up here, uh, that's all Cranford up there. Um, so the local residents uh, did a deal. Well, Heathrow, sort of like for uh, for purposes of, you know, um, 
working with the local communities um, created the Cranford Agreement where they said every day at 3 p.m. we will switch operations so that you guys get a bit of a um because these things when they come screaming overhead it's great as far as I'm concerned you can do it all day long uh, um, but uh, local residents obviously you know when these things come hammering over your head every uh, every 90 seconds especially back in the old days with this with the 747s screaming over the top man Paul Skilling, uh, Air India 773, now due at <laughs> 1816. So she's massively early, isn't she? Wow. Well, we did look that up last night, so. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Love that livery, man. Okay, okay. Okay, come on. Come on, Uber. Is he on the motorcycle or is he on a... Uh... Okay, so he's on a motorcycle, is he? Okay, come on, lad. Come on. Don't just loiter around the other end of the hotel. He might be the, uh, the one that knows where we are. Salem Mike Cranford Agreement was an oral undertaking given in 1952 by the British government to the residents of Cranford in London regarding the use of the runways at London Heathrow Airport for noise. There we go, noise abatement. And it was definitely um, very specific back in those days. I mean, 1952, that's just around about the time when the comet was uh, the first of the jet age was, um, was upon us. Um, when was the uh, oh I think this guy might be struggling Jilly he's not come round here yet is he sitting at the as in as in to my to my right look at that guy tracking across to join the um it's Iberia 350 Sam, use your noddle. Which way, Chile? There he is. Yeah, I think this is it. Oh, mate, come on, there's a bloke standing on the top of a van. Really? You alright, mate? Yeah, he's got me over there. Well, there's not many people standing on the top of a van, is there? Never mind. It's all good. I'm like, what's the matter? What's the matter? I'm like, well, no, no, it's a matter. I'm just trying to get your attention, mate. <laughs> what does it say? What does it say on the delivery thing? Wait, it, you know, you know, he's waiting outside. Pick up outside. It says it. it says it quite clearly. Come on. Oh, 
الله هو السهل نعمل لفتي Looks like a dreamline they wing that. Oh, lefty fighter again. with you Bob M. It is a beautiful sight seeing the glide slope um, and of course as the night time comes in Spot 5 Live 777 Freighter <laughs> Very funny legend, Freddie Laker. Yeah, let's order some red um, table tennis bats, Jilly. <laughs> Great in this light. Oh, kind of fit. Thank you, Martin P. Had EY17 during about an hour. Thank you, Kathy. Keep me posted, folks, on what's coming in. We know what that is. Oh, Kevin Beasley, 767, DHL 767 in 11 minutes. Charlie J, Emirates 380, number one on flight radar. With 1,588 people tracking it, and I'd say quite categorically that that is probably a high percentage of you lot. <laughs>
Dan over four hours late for some reason. What, this uh, Emirates jet? Wow. Jules Harris. Oh, it's great when the sun's shining right at him. Lights up the engines. Got the ray bands on. A delay like that is always technically related, isn't it? It's not going to be passenger related. Oh, well, sorry, we had to wait four hours for a for a passenger to turn up. It's just not going to happen. So, uh, unless something like uh, the uh, one of the air crew went ill, was ill, and they had to find a, a stand-in and didn't have anybody available because their time slots were all, all out of place. You know, that happens. Or like I say, it's a, a technical issue, uh, engine related or, or, you know, just a, just a technical issue. Could be cabin related. JJ Jacks, ATRs. We've got an ATR on approach. Screaming Emu, I literally waited four hours for a passenger once. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, it could be that then. Understand that. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be tearing the walls down, or apart, or whatever. Nice, seven three seven. Here we go. Not a lot, Max. Playing um, 
whatever that game is over there. Well, those uh, three fifties, aren't they? Yes, Emirates is the only airline, the only, the only operator that flies the 380, operates the 380 into Manchester. Here comes a little turbo prop. If you were ever wondering about identifying one of these turbo props against the Dash 8, um, just look at the undercarriage. The undercarriage is, um, comes out from the body of the aircraft. The um, traditional way whereas the dash 8 has the um, undercarriage stowed in the um, engine bays so to speak or behind the engines go for reverse pitch Make that exit, son. You'll make that exit. Go on. Oh, no. Is he? Go on, mate. Yeah. Fair play, fella. <laughs> he nearly ran it off the edge there, didn't he? <laughs> I think this is the reason why there was very little spacing between those those two Blues Brothers turn <laughs> Drift, Dan. Thomas Thompson. Watch this very one. Uh, coming out the Logan Air Shed at Glasgow about 1pm. Wow, there you go. How cool is that? Mark N remembers flying on a Logan Air BAE 146 to Malaga in the 1990s. Wow. The 146. British Aircraft Corporation, BAC, wasn't it? Um, that's... Um, same as the 111. But that 
was the BAE, sorry, British Aircraft Corp Corporation, easy for you to say, it was British, Air, was it one of them, BAE, British Air Aircraft um, Engineering, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> that's BAE, um, this isn't the one I flew on though, just had a painting up, is it? Carol Smith. Penny Lane is in the van and I'm steady. Oh, was that not on there? Okay. <coughs> She's a clean machine. Du -du 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 Sorry. It's your fault. Sarah Louisa could have drive, driven under the A3, <laughs> almost, yeah. Just disappeared, it just got very quickly off uh, off to his um, gate. My, uh, Sailor Mike BAE, British Aerospace. British Aerospace Engineering, um, British Aircraft Engine. Oh! Started out as HS146 Hawker Sidley Paul Evans. There we go. Um, she's a little bit more in shot now, isn't she? Still looking sleek and beautiful, isn't she? No wing like it, folks. J Mank said it before on here, but my proudest aviation moment is my first ever flight on an Air Manchester BAC 111. Air Manchester, wow. Mate of mine, Andrew, used to, he's now with Virgin Atlantic on the 787s, used to fly the BAC 111s out of Manchester. <clears throat> on, the, on the flight deck, smoking a fag with his, with his co-pilot. Window slid back, clear for takeoff, fag out the window, slide the window shut and off we go. <laughs> She's brilliant. You know, And you got to remember that in those days, in those days, they wouldn't have had uh, they wouldn't have had the door shut. So all that cockpit smoke mixing inside the cabin and everything just terrible, isn't it? I'm absolutely amazed there weren't more uh, 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 aviation disasters with people discarding cigarettes in the uh, in the toilets because people would go in there and have an oily rag, wouldn't they? Sitting there like reading the paper or whatever. <laughs> I'd imagine anyway, but you know, I mean, um, I think they had, it just, just, just does amaze me, but that not more things, you know, people falling asleep with a cigarette, up, like, like my old man used to fall asleep with a, with a fag half gone, you know, and it's, it's just like, you know, it'd be just a big, long, ashy thing, you know, terrible, man. Um, but people who would have done that on planes and fallen asleep and the cigarette drops down, like, just, uh, it just does, Amaze me but that, that there weren't many, um, lots of uh, air to air, f you know, cabin fires or whatever. And if Heathrow would have fancy new uh, e cars, very smart. Oh, here's your 767, I think. Rich S, I remember seeing burn stains on cushions on planes, yes. It just does. Oh, it's a lovely aeroplane, look at this.
Lawrence Cope drove past Filton on the Thursday that they have a wing with an engine attached. A wing with an engine. What, what, what is a static display or something? Lovely, lovely. Good afternoon, sir. Look at that lovely old airplane. Probably served once with TWA or something crazy like that. Oh, she's a pure freighter. Always been a freighter. Didn't have a freight change. Get it? Get it? Freight change? Arp Rap Lux. I used to be a smoker and would light up on planes. Hate it now, but I had the best time partying at the bar. Was that at, uh, on the 747s? Wow, well, yeah. It's crazy how it's gone, isn't it? Mind that. Gordon Freeman in from Leipzig where we went oh what a no no Le Liege that was it oh climb I still can't get it right even though we've been there oh my god really just give you a coffee and shout out to you oh I say Looks like a DC-10 look. Oh, darn it, darn it, darn it. Double barrel. Well, at least it's two lids. At least it's two lids and not a lid with that silly little plastic thing. They're hard to get out. Yeah, whatever. Lawrence Cope, can you you can see it on street view? Oh, okay. So he's talking about that engine. I'm guessing. Uh, hello. There's absolutely nothing on arrivals, Jilly. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sailor like Sailor Mike. I remember airline ticket agents uh, asking my dad, smoking or non-smoking? He always took smoking. No wonder we sat in the back of an MD-80. <laughs> yeah. Smoking was all, always in the back, wasn't it? Oh, she's British registered, that 767, uh, Richard Dockray saying. Interesting. She's British registered. What's that, GP? What's happened? What's Gloria Garrison tuning in from Cincinnati. I did do a flight, uh, a show from Liège. I actually would say that I didn't do a flight, a show from Liège because it wasn't really, was it? Not a lot got done in Liège. I was, I wasn't, I was, I was, I was in a right old state, yeah, with me back. Um, but that coupled with the fact that it was very uncomfortable weather conditions, you know, very blowing, cold wind with drizzle as well. Um, with me not feeling the, uh, the best on that day. It was just, uh, we, we cut it short. Um, which, uh, you know, again, the uh, I nearly said the passengers there, uh, the members were more than happy to, uh, to, uh, to allow me to uh, call it a day early. <clears throat> 
Sarah Louise, take care. Safe travels to you as well, wherever you might be going. Steph, it is where my back went. Yeah, it wasn't much fun, I have to say. A lot of filling at, um, at Liège. Of course, you always get off put, put off a little bit or miss sort of like miscalculate it in terms of like the numbers of aircraft that are operational it's uh, there's a lot of waiting around at liege unfortunately there's a lot of good stuff goes on there um but when you're live it's uh, always problematic with having to fill i mean we do we do we we, we do whatever we have to do but uh, you know it's it's uh <clears throat> when you've got a combination of you know dodgy weather conditions uh, you're not feeling your best in terms of your back and all that and and you're having to fill constantly uh, it sort of like takes all the it zaps all the energy out of you and it make it takes all the excitement away whereas um, even Heathrow in a, in, in a quiet moment like this is a lot to look at um, and you know that something's going to happen in the next few minutes uh, blue sky thank you Thank you, I appreciate it. Wasn't sure. Do South one. Uh, still kicking myself for not taking the Concorde out of YYZ to Heathrow at the reduced employee rate. <gasps> you should have done that. Uh, Carl Hanlon, Cafe 747 taxiing now. Wow. So she's um, she's uh, not had a great deal of um, stuff on that jet. She didn't come in. Much more than an hour ago, was it, Jilly? Uh, that cafe jet. Brian Stewart, we spent plenty of time watching them try to fix that door at Liège, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, 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 there was a jumbo, there was a jumbo, they couldn't, they couldn't shut the door properly. You remember that? Really? It was the only thing we were looking at for about an hour. Yeah, man. Or just kept going back to it or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's right. You were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were. You were. Yeah. Jay Thompson. Old headphones looked like Dr. Stethoscope's nub ears after about hours watching the film with drop down projector everyone watching the same film <laughs> no idea what that's about joe jay thompson um sounds interesting uh, cpr we got cafe 747 going out indeed Oh, yes, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the stethoscope type headphones that you used to get. Yes, with the FMC, yeah. Uh, the, not the FMC, the flight, the, the flight entertainment system. Um, yes, very dodgy things, weren't they? And I bet they weren't recycled either. I bet they were, uh, you know, just, I don't know if they were or they weren't, but they were very uncomfortable and absolutely useless. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going out folks she's just being taken now to her gate where she will be um, well loaded with everything fuel baggage freight and passengers and of course uh, the wonderful wonderful crew taking off now as uh, as as cafe has Cafe rolled or is she still sitting at, uh, is she still waiting to go? Electrical braking system on the Dreamliner. Yes, your bum does look big in that, but I tell you what, it's beautiful. 
you've got a beautiful bum. Dicky dick big bottom now. Kinkins are ashtrays in the armrests, yeah. Do you know what? There's still aircraft out there that are being used um, with the original sort of like indentations where the ashtrays used to be that have now been covered over. Some old, yeah, well, they're very few, I would have thought. Um, yeah. Sailor Mike Electric start also indeed. Oman Air, 27 minutes out, Joe Thompson. Joe Thompson, Etihad, 380, 31 minutes out. Asiana, 359, 16 minutes out. Also, Paul Skilling saying thank you. Screaming in me on the CRJ, we had ashtrays in the cockpit still. <laughs> That's crazy. Eagle Atlanta, been flying from Atlanta to Florida and Puerto Rico in, on Delta of late, and it's been nothing but 757s. Nice. Well, it's a lot of, we're in that sort of like phase now, aren't we? Where, you know, um, many operators are, uh, have I missed that jumbo? I haven't missed that jumbo, have I? Um, many operators are, oh, there she is, yeah, she's full run. John Quinn, and my favourite is the Yam 787-9, which we saw in uh, Sydney. Only once, wasn't it? We saw her once, didn't we? Turn and burn. 747 on the roll. Thrust levers forward. Non flying pilot will call out takeoff thrust set. All engines up to power. N1 pressures reading out on the FMC. There she goes. This should be pretty spectacular. Where's she going back to then? Uh, she's going back, going to France or something? Or going back to Dubai? Is she going back to Dubai? Or Charles de Gaulle? Yeah, there we go. Wow, she's light, man. So it's likely that uh, she's going to CDG empty and possibly picking up freight from CDG then on to uh, wherever she might go next. It's going to be a turn, left turn coming up soon. Leveling out already, look at that. Decent climb rate on her. Beautiful, beautiful shot. What a profile. from a jumbo jet doing that kind of a manoeuvre. for a funky shot here. 
Are we on for a funky shot? She's going to go left now. There it goes. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> what did happen with the escape sheep? <laughs> Thought I'm going to see the British Apache Mark 1 helicopters farewell tour tomorrow. Yes, indeed, they are doing a tour around the UK, aren't they? The Apaches. Uh, I think they're being replaced by Apaches, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just more modern ones. shot than a jumbo bank shot is there APU running on the super jumbo thank you Vicky Yes, uh, Gordon, you're right, that's the one. The challenge accepted, 747. see so many new people joining the chat today folks um, again I have to reiterate if you are a new member um, please don't think twice about coming in and uh, having a chat feeding us with information technical or otherwise Simon Light Heathrow was awash with 747s. Now they're all gone. Uh, and we missed them, Simon. You're absolutely right. Um, it is a great shame. We do. We were fortunate enough to have, what, three, four years with, this, with the jumbo jet in full operation with British Airways um, before they even started the... Uh, of removing them. Gordon Freeman, the lifter type, type, indeed it is. Looks kind of flimsy, doesn't it? But that is a lifter tug. These um, hydraulic arms, very powerful hydraulic arms that reach around the front gear and lift it uh, and pull it that way. Uh, that way they, you know, the... Um, the vehicle is the steering mechanism. Look at him parking up there. Right next to that big old 380. Look at that, man. Isn't that insane? Wow. It's kind of rare for the Eurowings jet to park up there. It's normally on the opposite side, I have to admit. Big Rose still sitting there, look. Pop it, TCB, I'm flying from Heathrow in a few weeks on a Wednesday afternoon, staying at the Marriott. There you go. Well, we might be there. Nice to see you there, China. I think they're triple seven in a town. Engines. 
nice big load of separation behind him. Nothing to worry about. funky shot almost not complete not complete uh, Paul Skilling Air India 773 now 1818 618 for that we were expecting it around about five to uh, five to seven but obviously very early Carol Smith loving the front of Air China. Steph. Kurt Landgraf. Good afternoon. Uh, John Grinham, when are we going to see the new Air India livery at Heathrow? Wasn't it, um, wasn't it June time that they uh, predicted that they were going to be bringing uh, one of those new A350s into Heathrow? Algernon Sour clear. G. Uh, Tyra Sandy don't have a specific favourite aircraft because you know I just love aviation in general I don't you know I mean each aircraft has its own characteristics doesn't it which is why I love them so much very difficult for me to pinpoint any particular aircraft you know, if I was, if, if I was, um, if I had me back against the wall and I was told, you know, you must um, pick an aircraft, I would probably, I would probably go back to the old days of me old man with the DC-8. Um, probably a lot of people would say, oh, there's not much to that, but you know, it's just, it's just the memories that it evokes and, uh, and um, and the style, the old-fashioned style of uh, wow, look at that profile. See, that's a 350. Look at that wing flex. Look at that wing flex. There you go. There's an example there of how much that wing flex is up. It's got to be getting on for 11 feet, isn't it? Thank you. What's that? Star Wars movies from the... I think that Air China jet is just going to uh, go straight left. Asiana 350 on finals, is it? <laughs> Ian Park, Etihad 380, 25 minutes out. Rich S. Kathy Williams size difference, yes. Jeanette Haynes having the light nights now. QFA9 making good time today, Jez White saying. Left Perth 
Oh, this is the uh, Dreamliner, I guess, that he's talking about. Nailed it. such a beautiful aircraft look at the wing look at the size of the wing man the whole width of it's just huge in it could easily sling another two engines on it um, but um, don't need them thanks very much okay okay let's do a little check shall we need uh, any switch outs to be honest with you let's have a look at the mic the mic is 50% on I've come to meet with you again. <laughs> the sound of silence. <laughs> Chili called the police. Please, please, if, if horses, uh, if, if, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's all very funny to look back on it now, isn't it? But uh, oh my goodness me! Oh no! Yeah, some people were just laughing for the sake of it, for its comedic value. <laughs> Williams Etihad 9 on Flight Radar 24, number 9. Well, it's down to you folks. If you want to make a number 1, get her on your Flight Radar 24 app. This is Malaysia. I'm oh, China Eastern, sorry. Oh, my 
God, yes, I know, man. I'm going to ask for us. Funk, 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 funk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's all right, man, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Martin Jordan, Jerry did a go around. Rob Cook, round them up, move them out. Odd UK, yes indeed, that's very true. I have to say a big shout out to the uh, to, to the fella who did come and round him up because he did it without any sweat whatsoever. He's like, all right, yeah, yeah. I was like, mate, 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 it's just a chain for like, oh, well, it's all right, yeah. I was like, yeah, but <laughs> it's good for me. The poor old, poor old um, uh, Heathrow police who I normally call up in a nice, easy fashion. Oh, hello, this is Jerry, big Jerry. Oh, hello, Jerry, how are you doing? Yeah, what, do you want a CAD number, do you? Yeah, 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 where are you going to be today? la di -da. yeah, all right, no, CAD number 1471, okay, thanks, I'll give you a call when we're done, all right, thanks a lot. This time it's like, oh, please, please, oh, she's, oh, she's, oh, she's a bit, and cross, and cross, a bit down the road. What's going on, Jerry? Oh, she's, oh, she's, a jelly, oh, she's, <laughs> oh my god oh it must have been a funny old oh <laughs> cross a little fall those walls <laughs> I had dreams I had dreams and it wasn't good those dreams were not good <laughs> anyway all's well that ends well Oh, I'm going to come to this uh, Asia Island jet. Isn't she beautiful? A unique sort of like, you know, fuselage um, primer, almost. <laughs> That's funny. Jerry, you're going to have to slow down a bit. <laughs> oh, shit. Red and silver everywhere. The car van, the gate. <laughs> Jilly. Who's Jilly? Hello. What? <laughs> I've never been so out of breath in my life. Even when I ran the 100 metres at school. <laughs> Very nice home on there. Yeah, nightmare, very funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they were all coming out, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, the sneaky spare one. Another, here we go. Got another one coming up, look. Look at Asia. Do, 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 do. China 350 pushing back. We saw that arriving earlier. Turn around quick, aren't they? <laughs> Scott Amos liking the Oman Air livery. Yeah, we all got a good laugh out of it. Didn't we? And it all worked. It all ended well in the end. Thank <laughs> God. I've still yet to go down the builder's yard to geezers that were there and they literally stood in the middle of the road. Luckily their compound was open and they just herded them straight in there. It's about the only time in my life I've, I've wanted to kiss a, a human being with a big beard. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this could, is he, is he gonna push out in front of us and give us a bit of a start up on those XWBs? Now these XWBs, when they fire up, 
they're quite quiet. You might get a little, you know what I'm talking about if you've flown on the 350. Sometimes it's a very long but completely different than the, uh, than the GE90 for example. It's quite an elongated startup. Don't worry, I know there's a 380 on approach. Look how smart that thing looks, man. That's all you get. That's engine number one started. been all standing in it that would have been clean and hilarious <laughs> yeah 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 right we're gonna come to this uh, super jumbo now stand by Oh, yeah, but it was only the camera. It was only the camera. Oh, flipping it. So we missed the 380 altogether. We missed the 380 altogether, did we? We... The Etihad that's just touched down, man. Flipping heck. Tell you, I tell you. Right, that's a lesson learned. That's a technical lesson learned. It has to have a battery in the in the camera, mate. I cannot rely purely on that that system there because it obviously drains it a lot quicker, doesn't it? When it's when it's charging the battery, that's fine. But sorry, folks. Say about that. Yeah, Jilly was panicking. She thought there was a load of horses running up. Uh. I know, but look at this picture, mate. That moon is gonna is gonna rise, isn't it? We're gonna get we're gonna get shots through the moon, mate. I'm telling you, we're gonna get shots through the moon. And it's a full moon and all. I've got big flipping bits of ears growing out of me. <laughs> Big hairy hands. Oh mate, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is. If this works out well, which I think it will, as that moon rises, we are gonna get some unbelievable imagery here, man. look like the planet from Spa, Spa Wars. 
Actually, that's a good campaign for uh, for Spa, isn't it? <laughs> Use the special offers, Luke. Oh, l &M, don't feel bad, Jerry. There's another Emirates 380 about 11 minutes out. And I tell you what, that one is going to be right in the middle of Tip Moon. And uh, this could be an epic shot, folks. And Lloyd Bell, yes, we might. If it all pans out time-wise and the uh, trajectory of the moon as well, because I don't think it goes straight up, does it? Is it sort of like going at an angle? Zombie Tog's going to be getting his telescope out tonight. Don't know want, don't want to know about what you do personally tonight, Zombie Tog. But uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's a first example of it. Wow! Look at this man. No, 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 no! Yeah, right opposite us. Wow. Tatooine, Gordon Freeman. Jeff Colwell is a brand new member. Welcome, Jeff. Tatooine, sorry. That's no moon, that's a space station, he says. Oh, look at this one vectoring now, look. Look at that. Oh, ho, ho. Oh man, come on! We need that 380 at that altitude. Mind you, it's gonna it's gonna join from the from the left, isn't it? The 380. Baz Wookie goes up to goes up at 45 degrees. Walking on the moon. Dun, dun, dun. Jeff Colwell uh, from San Francisco. There we go, Captain Jeff. How you doing, mate? Lovely to meet you. I wonder if he's watched the shows back. I'd imagine he probably has. Well, this is something that we rarely get, ladies and gents. I don't think we've ever had this before. We've had uh, we've had moons and stuff like that on uh, the show before, but not one. Not, we, no, you know what I mean. Not one that's been in that position. Blah blah blah. I've got something else that's. Um, doom, doom, doom. I might as well split. Doom, 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 doom. There's another one uh, vectoring from the uh, from the um, coming in from the right. Is it Swiss 330? Yeah, yeah southeast. Yeah. Here it comes. Walking on the moon. Uh, Ranjit Singh has the Bim and Seven Eight Seven had issues as it's in the hangar area. Ranjit, absolutely. I'm waiting for someone. In fact, it's moved. It's moved now. Is that it there? Is that the Bim and Jet there? It may well be. <laughs> Chris Breezy. Jeff Colwell, shot with the moon. Yeah, it's gone now though. The option, op the option has gone now. 
with the moon in it because um, it's too high in the sky now and uh, over here on the left hand side approaching London Heathrow is the uh, Emirates 380 great shame about losing the uh, losing the power on the camera um, that's something that's going to be fixed folks that's not going to happen again uh, just be something else yeah well uh, yeah 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 it, that 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 was actually that was actually something that resulted from um, the uh, the cock up at um, at Sydney when we were trying to film at Sydney. Oh, Nigel! Uh, sorry, Neil Gay saying just flown into. Madrid on BA and a bit of a drama with a man arrested on arrival for Spanish by, by the Spanish police. Wow, B didn't see that coming. Well, yeah, wow, there we go. How about that? Fly SSC1. It's not going to be any lower than that Fly SSC1, I can assure you. That thing's going up like a rocket, isn't it? I mean, it's orbiting, isn't it? It's orbiting the planet Earth. EK3 number three on flight radar 24 HGC saying thank you mate. So we might get some um, some electric activity tonight. Get yourself in, get yourself in focus. Son. Come on, come on. Ooh, he didn't like that, did he? I don't like it up, sir. Have a, we have a lunar eclipse tomorrow, partially, probably. Okay. Oh, nice, sir. Uh, Trent start. And stand on Formula three Z, three Zulu, three Z. Here comes the gear, is it? Not just yet. Here it comes now. Oh, three AM Tuesday. Oh, three AM Tuesday. It's a nice shot, isn't it? She's number two, Daniel Burns. Ambo to the south. There are two A380s there now, the AOG aircraft is the SQ-308 operated yesterday. Okay, the aircraft on ground. So, what do you mean it's come towards me? Oh, is he? TV logo is in the moon. There it is. Let's just take it away from it then. Is that worthy of a thumbnail? Will people see what it is? She's number one. She is number one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Big Moon TV, zombie top. Q 
fly me to the moon and let me dance upon the stars. Yeah. Aren't you put her on my Yeah, if I left the camera static the moon would move out of the shot, wouldn't it? Nice bit of speed up plumage there from the... Saw the triple seven in the new livery at Sydney, didn't we? Whoa! Drilled that one! Go on, son. Special man, <laughs> that was real special. Let's see if the moon, if I leave the camera static, let's see if it actually moves from the, uh, there we go, let's just leave it at that and see what happens. Brian Clark is a returning member, welcome back Brian. Henry stuck the landing, did indeed. Brian Tinker, thank you, Brian. Des, Liz, Diane. J Mank, Steph, LA Girl. Magnificent sunset. Tony Tutti. You can actually see it moving now, man. Well, it's not moving. We're moving, aren't we? The rotation of the Earth. Look at that, actually, I'm not touching the camera, folks. I've got here, standing here with my hands in my pockets. Jez White, biggest reverses of the day, definitely on that 380. Chris Breeze, you can see it rising, you can. Zombie Tog has gifted a membership, thank you Zombie. And Viscount Mitch, there he is right there. Being gifted that membership by Zombie Tog. It's not the moon. It's us rotating. Well, the rotation of the Earth, but also um, the, uh, the, 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 the way that it also, you know, orbits. Well, the Moon orbits the Earth, doesn't it? The Earth doesn't orbit the Moon, or does it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Well, we do, we have an orbit, don't we? And the moon orbits around our orbit or within it or something like that. J. 
Jason P is asking for a refund. Feeds far too much uh, uh, airtime for horses and moons and uh, plastic bottles. <laughs> it wants a refund. Uh, Tony Duty, the moon rotates around the earth and the earth rotates around the sun. There we go. I told you, we have an orbit. It has an orbit. Everyone has an orbit. We're all happy. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful sunset, man. Let's make sure we don't miss... Uh, we might get a couple of uh, right corkers going out. There's a little one going out, but uh, not enough to sort of... Brian Clark's a returning member. Welcome back, Brian. Yeah, I'm not able to see the screen. For, I don't see the logo because I'm seeing just what's on my monitor. Hey, that's a jumbo, isn't it? Look at the lighting on the, um, wow, Cargolux, condensation, water droplets, on Jupiter on Mars, yeah. Hello. Uh, is that a 767 returning to gate? What's he doing? Do South 1. JF840. It is indeed Cogrelux. Does look great the contrails in this. Uh, you see the power, can't you? Oh, she's a dash four with Rolls Royce RB211 engines. Uh, Lloyd Bell, nothing better. You're right, mate. Let's light her up. Yeah, there she is, man. Come on, mate. Don't worry. We're, we're, we'll come out of that cloud. There she is. Thomas love cargo planes. Awesome shot, Ian Morrison. 767 supposed to be heading to Newark at 1800, Nick Gray. Um, it's now, uh, yeah, it's just done a U-turn, heading back for uh, the active. Timmy tail strike. <laughs> This looks like uh, this looks like uh, Oh it's the Air India jet, he's early isn't he? In other words, ah. great livery tail up, line up there. Blue blood flame raptor. Loves the liveries on them all. Yeah, it's great seeing a, a, a line up of uh, of liveries, doesn't it? Isn't it? Doesn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> Very, 
Viscount Mitch. Paul Skilling, 1818, spot on. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Shane De Costas, uh, Delta 757, with Tusk Trust stickers, livery operated by DHL Austria. Overhead, my oh, he's over his back. I thought it's in. Did I say? Did, did I? Did I say Delta? I don't know. Uh, did I? Okay, sorry, DHL. Oh, it's inbound, is it? Oh, okay, okay. I thought it was okay. Awesome. Shane De Costa, due to land, four minutes. Thank you. Ranji, good night to you. Rick Lorike, I thought karaoke style sing. Spot five live, uh, DHL three minutes out, 7.57. Always a, uh, you know, uh, a pleasure to see a 7.57. Alan Brook, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Alan. Where are we going on Wednesday? We don't yet know, Alan. Um, maybe I can get me teeth in me head first. <laughs> Figure out what I'm saying. Um, but um, there you go, look at that, right on time, bang on time. Um, yeah, it, is, it, it does all depend on operations and so on and so forth. Imagine it's going to be Heathrow. I don't know what the weather conditions are for, for Heathrow on Wednesday. Um, we'll just have to see, really, I guess. Oh, hiya. I love watching your, your channel, especially when there's weather. So it's oh, fantastic. Awesome. Here, take some stickers back to the United States of America. <laughs> Make sure you declare them at customs. Of yeah. course. Thank you very much. Okay. It's such a beautiful day for this. Isn't it just? Thanks. See you soon. A supporter from the United States of America. There you go. Oh, Jim. It's wet, wet, wet. Apparently, most of the week. And the devil's just dying. And the devil's Oh, well, if it's wet, 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 then we'll get some of this, won't we? got a yawn coming on Jilly. <laughs> I can feel a yawn coming on. Oh dear. We'll start eating the rails now, do we? Uh, Shane DaCosta, Air Lingus 320, following behind the DHL 757. Sprat 67, Triple 7, Lenny. Blood Flame Raptor. Emma Scissorhands. Raptor X, that BA777 from Marley. Marley? Ian Lyles, when are you doing a, a, a military mili, mili tray? <laughs> when are you doing a melee tray? Um, well, I'll tell you what, uh, it's funny you should say that. Um, I'm always up for military. 
Uh, it's all it's all down to everybody else, but you know, um, we don't do them sort of like very frequently. Um, the last one we did was okay. We haven't done um, Coningsby for a long while, and the reason why we haven't done Coningsby is because we're not sure about the, um, the spectators' uh, compound, whether it's uh, whether it's open yet or whether, what, 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 what's going on there. Nothing to anyone local to it that could sort of fill us in on that. Uh, this is it, beautiful 757. She's just turned her landing lights on. Landing slash taxi. Oh, she ain't got no winglets either. Making her even more special. RB211s, look at this. Oh, that might be a thumbnail right there, Jilly. I think that might be a thumbnail there, mate. You might want to... Kurt Langreth. Florida might be a good location. Well, we've done Miami um, twice or three times, actually. Three times we've been to Miami. Captain Manny, proper. He loves it. He loves the old jet. Look at that. Steve, there may be other streamers doing Coningsby. There's no other streamers that do Coningsby like us, though, is there? Hey. Yeah, look at that. Old school. You know the score. Well, yeah, but that's o that, that's opened in the morning, isn't it? It's not. It's not. The height barrier isn't isn't there all day. It's it's closed at night. Oh, is it? Really? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but we don't. Mm. It would mean getting there early, early before anyone gets there. You know. In, uh, so that we can sort of like be there for when is it Dave? I think it's Dave, isn't it? The fella who runs the burger van. A second emotion. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Look, there she is. Didn't. Small stuff in it now, more or less. Connington.
Is that, uh, are we on? Am I on? Okay. Daniel Burns and Gremlins are watching today. <laughs> I've not seen Bimmin for years. There you go. Martin Jordan, time for an emergency checklist. Yeah. <laughs> Should have switched it out, Jimmy, when it was on 20%. I really just done it. Just boxed. Should have boxed. Not the one with Steve Wright on it, though, is it? Oh, hello. Haven't seen this for a while, have we? Yeah, and in terms of Wednesday, folks, as well, um, we might have a little bit of news before Wednesday. It depends on how things move ahead with our, with our, um, with what we're doing, um, and it may be that we we, we we may be able to bring you something before Wednesday. Well, on Wednesday, something different, you know. But but just um, obviously stay tuned for all of that because. Um, it's quite exciting, really, and I don't know which I'd uh, which I'd do, Jilly. <laughs> Lady Hole, yes, Vistara are Indian indeed. I thought that Air India and Vistara were sort of like loggerheads. Oh, really? Harry, get some stickers, so uh, just go to the app, download the app, and, uh... Oh, Harry, didn't I give him some stickers? I gave him some stickers, didn't I? I did, I traded him two stickers for the coffee. <laughs> Thomas Cleary, when will we go to Ireland again? Don't know, Thomas. Um... Lonely up on that bank in, uh, in Dublin, isn't it? You know that United 767 that I said was returning to gate, potentially? It's still sitting over there, you know? They must have some kind of a, a questionable technical issue, something that uh, they are troubleshooting. Or they've just missed their slot or something like that. There he is there, look. That's that... Uh, is that the 767 going out with DHR? It's going to go up like a skyrocket, isn't it? No, 300. A300 is going to go up about here, I reckon.
crypto stickers, John Freeman. Well, one thing we ain't doing is do trading cards. <laughs> if we did, they'd be funny ones. Screaming Emu, some of our MELs are crew applied, meaning we can do them without maintenance, but it requires phone calls and paperwork, which takes time. Um, is that regarding, is that in reference to this aircraft sitting there um, waiting to go out? Screaming Emu, MEL, uh, maintenance, something, something, maybe. Captain Manny, beautiful in all her glory. Oh, is that the 757 we were thinking of? Andreas Krugel, boom, announced a successful flight of XB1. Is that a prototype or something? They, they, didn't, didn't boom make a little tiny, um, like almost drone-like um, aircraft that flew about 100 yards or something um, to test it or something? I don't know, just a down very heavily downscaled version Darren Graham United 921 has a tech issue trying to resolve the issue stand by minimum equipment list MA say thank you meaning of MEL right, Eurowings 321 Dusty pin! I couldn't see what you could have won. Crew applied minimum equipment list. As in, they're able to try and troubleshoot a technical issue without the technicians and without, obviously, somebody coming out to the aircraft. It certainly looks like that. I don't know. That could be a um, pressurization issue because don't, don't pilots like t t check literally every. It's like a like a um, um, one of those things that they continually check uh, cabin pressurization um, because obviously it's very very important um, part of flying an airplane. I did, Jules, I did, I did, I did. <laughs> I did. Dusty bin, the most uh, confusing thing ever. Looks like a, uh, what, this is 3.30 maybe? Yes, it is. Oh, it's uh, Xingxing or Xingxing or Shenzhen. Still there. Oh, not going to be very happy customers. She's going to have to end up over at the uh, maintenance shed. Look. Oh dear. Oh drama. Oh, uh, Ellie Morgan. Uh, that tug might be heavy, heading for the 767. Which tugs that? See. Big flowery dresses on um, Dusty Bin and all that, wasn't it? Women wearing 
shoulder pads and big flowery dresses and blokes in corduroys <laughs> and mullets and all that kind of thing going on with it. Curly hair and flares. <laughs> non dark player first. Come on then. Savia. In one! A bully special prize! <laughs> oh, the good old days. <sighs> Screaming at me. United's flaps are still out. That's a good sign. And now she's, what's she going to do? What are they going to do? I think she's making a beeline for the runway. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Moon wants to show his little face just one last time. <laughs> I wonder what happened to all the speed boats. <laughs> Never mind, love. Let's let's come see what you could have won. Oh, it's a mini metro. I don't think anyone in the audience was under the age of 83. Gamble! It's all right for you to say. I've got 30 quid on the line here. <laughs> right, it's just going to take me 25 minutes to count out this 30 quid. Uh, we'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Uh, Rich, yes, we will be streaming Easter Sunday. Mind you, I haven't run that past Jilly yet. <laughs> but I think we will. Not taking the cats out anywhere, if I, Jilly. Sunday Easter egg ex extravaganza. Dreamy's flavoured Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, the prizes were rubbish, weren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. A set of something. His and hers something. If God, we've had a lovely day, Jim, we'll take the £25. <laughs> it's worth about 200 quid in those days, though, wasn't it? No. Uh, Darren Graham, London Air uh, Ambulance. The Ambo's coming our way. Is it now? Well, I can see something moving. I can see a... We might see that ISS, you know. There it is! Oh, no, it's an ambulance. <laughs> 
Cool Eye TV. Hopefully everyone's all right on the Ambo. Uh, yeah, you know, we've caught the ISS before, mate. We have, we have. We definitely have. Um, and where's it come? Which, which uh, direction is it going from? It depends, of, it, of course, if it's a visible one as well, because you have the... Um, the uh, it, when the sun reflects off of it, uh, if it doesn't do that, you don't get to see it. That's not it there, is it? Because that's not really moving. Aviation 4K MD900 helicopter. Go west, yeah. Right. Good band, though, well. I should quite like some of the songs. Um, um, right, so is it coming towards me? Which way is it rotating? Um, or travelling from right to left? So over the top of me, or north of me, or, uh, or is it going to be. Uh, see, there's only that one there that I've got. Just that little fella there, look. All up there, all on his own in the sky. Look, uh, which, oh, there he is. Oh, okay. So that will be the second time. Second time around. No way! Rich Thomas, I won Bullseye in 85, got 400 quid and five prizes, including a Black & Decker workmate. 400 pound, a lot of money back then. You <laughs> Wow, fair play, mate. Oh, my, is it available? Yeah, is it available? That's the question. Did you ever get to see the tapes? Yeah, yeah, did, did we have a uh, 1985? Yeah, we had, uh, we had um, VHS tape recorders back in 85, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is fantastic, Rich. That is brilliant. Got to meet the legend. Jim Bowen. Lovely lad. Lovely lad. Gamble! I'm sure the um, audience were just fantastic sitting there knitting some people you see people knitting and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah or asleep one of the two beta max oh oh the UK they keep repeating bullseye Maybe we will see you, Rich. Well, if, if you're on, well, it doesn't it? It never says it, doesn't it? It doesn't say like season four, episode 12, does it? Or anything like that. Never know. You just have to keep watching every single one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's definitely still got the bendy bully, hasn't he? Look at this beautiful aeroplane. Are you serious? He met Benny from Crossroads in a canteen. Oh my goodness me, that is fantastic. Andrew McClure, uh, may remember him from shows such as Stop. Um, Andrew McClure saying, we'll be right over London currently, mid-Atlantic, so won't be long. Um, okay, well, uh, there are apps where you can track 
um, the um, the ISS, the International Space Station. <laughs> there are um, there's that beautiful moon. Not looking quite as big as she did when uh, when she rose. Straightforward. Need to get my VHS working again. Oof. I have so many tapes to switch over. Well, you won't be able to do that, will you? Not with a VHS. It's not like there's an output, an HDMI output on it or something. You'd have to get some equipment, wouldn't you? To, to offload VHS tapes and put them on another system. Or you could, I guess, play them out on the TV and then record them on a digital camera, maybe. Joe Thompson loving the airport this time of night. Sri Lankan. More trend sets. Hinge door reverses. Clamshells, as I've sometimes described them. Josh Elwin, 787X, Sri Lankan 330-300 from Colombo Raptor X saying thank you. Oh, okay, okay. We have we have a mic about to go down, GP. Um, okay. Let's just have a little look at that. Well, I don't know. It's not still showing green, so we're all happy with that. Oh, Poppet's got a VHS to DVD recorder. of equipment that isn't it oh is it well I'll have a look for it I'll have a look for it not seeing any ISS folks I'm looking maybe not visible on this on this rotation I think we're done. I think we're done on that. There it is. There it is. There it is. I got it. 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 It's, there it is. Oh, mate. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to pick it up. It's right over the top of me, man. You just saw it, did you? Stand by. Let's just see. Because this is a sun. This is a what's known as the sun flare or glare or whatever it is that's on the ISS right now. Oh, bloody hell. I can't get any steeper than that. That's the trouble. Oh, there it is. You see it? You see it? You see it? There it is, Jilly. Middle of the screen now. Wow, look at that, folks. The International Space Station right there on your screen live. She's going pretty fair old lick, isn't she? Wow. I'm just going to let that go through the screen. Look at that. Look at that. How cool is that, man? How cool is that? I, I, am I, I mean, you know, I don't know if it's, am I the only live streamer to ever have caught the ISS live on a, on a show, on a stream. Wow. Unbelievable, man. People are um, quite impressed with that, as I am with this camera, I have to say. Uh, right, you lot, that's it. Bye. <laughs> no, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Um, 
really appreciate your company. Uh, I've, got, I've got to have a laugh. You've got to have a laugh at that, at that uh, young lady from wherever it was uh, from America sending me that sticker request. Um, it's the best thing ever. You'd have to look back at the beginning of the video, folks. Um, but she'll be getting her stickers. Uh, wow, look at it. You can really clearly see it now. Look at that. Look at that, man. I mean, satellites, you can see satellites clearly on a, on a starry, starry night. But that is pretty, uh, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? All the bits and bobs on it. It's quite old now, isn't it? The old uh, Fing Fong. Yeah, 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 look at that. Right, folks, thank you so much. Been great having your company once again. I really appreciate it. Thank you to the Renaissance. I know they uh, they never watch, they never, um, but we bring them a lot of business. It's as simple as that. And um, thank you to uh, thanks Harry, by the way, for uh, for the coffee. Really appreciate that. And um, thank you to you lot. Now stay tuned next week, folks, because uh, we might have some exciting news, sort of like Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever it might be. And we don't know what we're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, folks. Apparently, I'm hearing that it might be zero nines on Wednesday. Uh, that being the case. We're kind of limited to what we, our positioning here at Heathrow um, might do something else, I don't know. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, you know, with us, you, you, you roll with us, literally. And um, we'll have to see what happens. Um, but other than that, thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jilly, once again. Um, and the mods, I don't know who was there tonight, but um, we, uh, we only... Uh, Trish was there tonight. Thanks, Trish. Really appreciate it. And um, we will uh, we'll see you on uh, on Wednesday, folks. But just stay tuned uh, for updates as well. If you download uh, the app, uh, we put updates on there. But uh, more often than not, it's Twitter normally. Uh, if we're going to be putting anything else, uh, anything out, then um, then check out Twitter. Um, and you can uh, follow me on LinkedIn if you like. Not that I do a great deal on LinkedIn. It's mainly all business on there. But um, anyway, look forward to seeing you Wednesday, folks. And um, we'll keep you posted if anything interesting happens. We, we. See you later. Starry, starry night. Do, be, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah.